gentlemen welcome to another edition of encrypted connections i am your host kyle um happy thursday everybody i hope you're all doing well tonight we you're in for a treat guys you're in for a treat um this is a, a big deal for me it really is it's a big deal for me um so you can get a big head all you want sir uh, let it blow up uh i i have known um of mr horgan for a while um alex petikoff really kind of turned me on to a lot more of the stuff that I didn't know about. Um, and th I'm very thankful to him for that. Um, but, you know, it's not often that you, uh, a, a, sh a schmuck like me uh, gets to interview somebody who holds an Emmy, not just one Emmy, five Emmys. Uh, <laughs> this gentleman has been all around the globe uh, for, you know, when it comes to his interest in this stuff, it goes back 40 years. Um, Area 51, the lost interview with Betty Hill, uh, the Bridgewater Triangle, many different UFO reports, multiple Bigfoot encounter experiences and reports. Um, and he also uh, works with the Boston Bruins Alumni Association. Is that correct? Yep. That's yep. right. And Florida gave us a beat down last night. I know. Unfortunately, that was that was too bad. But um, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. John Horgan. How are you tonight? How you doing, Kyle? Hello, everyone. Thanks for checking in with me. I'm going to just it's it's sundown out here in Boston and behind me, the chemtrails. You can see they started spraying about uh, six o'clock. But uh, we put the, there we go. OK, there. Oh, there you uh, go. good. Good, man. It's good. And thank you for having me on your show. Oh, I'm very happy to have you here. Uh, super, super grateful. Um, let me just say hi to the people in the chat because, of course, these are the reason that I continue to do this. Uh, just some amazing people here. Um, I'm a broken record. I say it over and over. I never expected to meet so many incredible folks through this weird, strange place we call it YouTube. Um, you know, it can be uh, just kind of grimy at times and, and people backstabbing and stuff, but the the upside when you find these wonderful people um it makes it all worth it and the people that continuously come here and I'm, i've only done this for what five and a half months now this show is only five and a half months old um so we're still fairly new and the people continuously come here over and over and over every single show to show their support their encouragement and and their uh, belief and loyalty in this show um it means so much to me so um, I'd like to recognize them as much as possible. So, uh, Existers, how are you, brother? Hope, thank you for coming. Linda, Salty, what's going on, buddy? Um, Carson, glad you're here, man. Octopus with no friends. I have not seen you in the chat before. That's a wonderful name. Um, it's a great name. Uh, if you're new here, oh. welcome. Thank. I'm so. I'm very thankful you're here. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Um, if and if this is your first time in the chat, I promise you, you will. Um, you'll come to see that the people here are just amazing folks. Um, so that's it. Let's get into it, man. Because there's there's a lot we can talk about here. Um, I'm going to start back at home because, um, you know, we're both New England guys and you've done a whole lot uh, when it comes to this strange place they call the Bridgewater Triangle. Um, can you tell us what that is? OK, um, it's you've heard of anomalous triangles where allegedly paranormal phenomena occurs, namely the Bermuda Triangle. 
the Dragon's Triangle off the coast of Japan, the Texas Triangle, the Great Lakes Triangle, um, wherever you go, the, even the uh, Nevada Triangle I've heard of. But it's a, it's a 200 square mile triangle with its apex in Abington, Massachusetts. And we're talking about South Central Massachusetts. And it's, its Southwest angle is on the Rehoboth, uh, Rhode Island line, Rehoboth, a, a, a town, spooky town full of cemeteries. And then the Southeast angle is in Freetown State Forest. So within that area, coined by author Lauren Coleman. Now, Lauren Coleman is the Jimi Hendrix of cryptozoology. <laughs> it's all about second place after Lauren. Lauren, it was the one who coined this term. I read his book, Mysterious America. Yes, I did in 1983, bro. So uh, when I was sick, so I remember that's when I, I was my first dose of cryptozoology, but he dubbed it because mysterious phenomena occurred in this place and the beating heart they call the Hockamock Swamp, mm. which is a, a few hundred acres, uh, several hundred acres of dense swamp, thicket, uh, water, briar, um, a host of mosquitoes that can bring you various sorts of diseases, ticks. Uh, areas of it haven't really been penetrated. And if you go to the Hockamock Swamp, do not go in October, November, because I remember walking in one time, and thank God I was wearing a bright vest, but I look up in the tree, and there's a hunter, a hunter, a hunter, a hunter, a hunter, <laughs> a hunter. It's like, oh, God, don't want to go in there. But in this, this anomalous area, um, and again, it, it started in the 70s, arguably December of 69, and we'll get into that. But they've allegedly seen Bigfoot, a man-beast anthropoid. I, that's what I call them, hominid. Uh, um, UFOs, balls of light, ghosts, uh, panthers, you know, uh, uh, cougars. As you know, I've, I narrated Alex's documentary on uh, uh, Lions of the East. Yeah, and, great documentary, uh, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. Well, Alex is, is the man. As you know, he's the, one of the greatest film producers I've ever met. And I've been in the business a long, long time. Yeah, he's a talented um, guy. Oh, no doubt. I mean, I, I knew this when he was in his early 20s. <laughs> the dude had the experience of a 40-year-old. But it's just as, and beyond his subject matter and his narration, the way he writes, but his cinematography and his soundscaping is true. And mm -hmm. anyways, we'll, we'll get back to AP later. But um, also when they, they found um, huge snakes, uh, the size of stovepipe, uh, the uh, some poisonous spiders, uh, snapping turtles, uh, the fisher cat, which is this nasty creature people talk about. I've never seen one. Um, oh, thunderbirds, giant birds that of, an, of a, a, a gigantic size. Um, what else am I missing there? Well, uh, oh, oh, and a black dog with red eyes. Mm. So that there's, and then arguably, I like to put the Dover demon in that, even though Do it was seen in in a Tony wealthy community in Massachusetts. It's just outside, and as as Lauren will tell you, the triangle spread. It's almost like a the Bridgewater octagon or the Bridgewater uh, you know trapezoid, um, but right, just right. areas in that area. And I maintain that the area was was hot with activity in the late 60s and throughout the 70s and then in about the early to mid 80s it went dormant picked up again in the late 90s and in my opinion it's just been trampled over by so many paranormal groups with these snappy acronyms you know um <laughs> and and mostly ghost researchers but i used to have the fordian anomaly research team yep. f-a-r-t and it just wafted off into the wind like any other paranormal organization <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but it said uh, they go in there and I, I i think in the early 2000s paranormal groups were going shh, shh, they were listening to other paranormal groups hiding across the forest um there's also <laughs> a place called oh yeah and there's a place called lake nipponicket where allegedly a sea sea monster's been i had a weird experience on that kayak and got lost and my my gps was just going batty and um and then uh you know of course bigfoot we can get into that but it, it's just a creepy place i don't recommend unless you're experienced like you walked in i don't know how deep you guys went in but um if you if you can get lost in there there are magnetic anomalous areas in there i know that there's if there's high tension wires hunters um and it, it, there's uh, allegedly occult activity has been done in the Freetown State Forest. I don't like that place at all. There's a phantom trucker on Copacut Road. I think you told me you went down that, which is yeah. a creepy road itself. Creepy. And I, 
Yeah, and I have the solution to that, but ask me later. But it's, it's just, it's just, it's a, a, a pantheon, a playground for paranormal uh, explorers. There's history there. Whether you'll see the phenomena, I'm not sure. But I do believe in paranormal phenomena that, like earthquake faults, that if it was seen in the present, there's a history of it being seen in that area, and probably in the future it'll be seen. Kind of like Bigfoot, UFOs. It's just strange. And oh yeah, I, I have to tell you this: there's sacred Native American grounds there, okay, that I think have been violated, uh, desecrated of graveyards, um, and curses have been put on that by uh, Native Americans. And that was the the uh, central location for some, for some fierce battles in what was known as the King Philip's War from June 28th, 1675 to 1676. Um, and it was the bloodiest war per capita. If you look at the uh, between the colonists right. and and them, and uh, I, I could just rail a, a, about uh, Church uh, in Winslow and all those guys. I, I'm a historian on the side, um, and I've done a lot of deep dives on the Pilgrims, and they're lucky to be alive, man. If we're one for Squanto, uh, to Squantum, Squanto. Uh, in Samoset. Otherwise, you know, we've been eating sticks and twigs and we're done and we're probably, we're probably French. <laughs> and speaking of French, right? So that, that's an overview. And uh, I'm, I'm off to the ramble already, man. No, you're good. You're good. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting area. Uh, and, and like you said, it, it's very easy to get lost in there. Um, we didn't go too deep when we went this time. Uh, I had been twice before um, with other folks, but when you go with Alex, it's a different it's a different animal. I mean, the, 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 Alex just knows so much, right? He's he's a walking encyclopedia. His brain is a steel trap. He doesn't forget anything, much like yourself. Um, I forget what I ate for dinner last night. Um, oh, the, oh, I had a stroke in August of 21, and there was a fire in the library. So, I, so new John is nothing like old John. And just every day I get up in the morning, it's a win. But Alex, and I got to tell you this, he's been so into some of the most remote areas and the hottest Bigfoot uh, where there's Bigfoot activity across the United States in the last four years. Nobody has even matched him in terms of where he's. And I kind of think that he's a magnet. Does that make I'm, any sense? He 100%. knows. Um, and there are people like that. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not a magnet. I've never seen a Bigfoot. I've never seen any anomalous phenomena, except maybe UFO and ask me that later. Um, but um, other than that, uh, you know, he, he knows about it. And he knows he goes in there too. And, and this is what he does psychologically. He's, he's putting out the vibe. I'm not going to hurt you. He's right. armed, but I ain't going to take you down. Right. Got you know, and, and there's a lot to that. I mean, these creatures, man, if, if we want to go into Bigfoot, they're, they're, they're sight, their olfactory, their smell, their hearing um, is phenomenal. It's, it, it, it's of any creature. And they're quick as hell to the point that there's something beyond quickness that maybe they can move one, one area to another. If you look at some of the historical stories. So, but circling back to Alex, though, he knows the science. He's one of the best in the business. He's been out there. And I told Alex, I said, you know what's going to happen? Cause he's just hearing wood on wood, maybe some howls, some footprints, some scat or whatever. I said, one day you're going to get the golden footage and people are going to turn on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? What and, happens? Yep. Yep, and that's a that's a shame. Like that Todd was standing the guy who went into room. I believe it. I believe him. I believe he, if he goes to the remote areas, that's not hoaxed unless he's come out and confessed. But it looks damn real, and it makes sense if he goes to these remote areas where no humans been. That's where these things or creatures would be, in my opinion. Uh, you know, quick. yeah, I agree. Um, I, I I have my own feelings about Todd, um, but I do. Here's what I say all the time about Todd: is that um, if Todd hoaxed anything, uh, because I have heard that he did, he got caught in some kind of lie. I heard this a couple times now. I wasn't there, so I don't know for sure. Um, I, I like to preface these things by saying that because I wasn't there. But but if he did, it's unfortunate because I don't think he had to. Like you said, where he's investigating is such an active area away from everybody that there's no need. To do any of that if he just is patient and continues to do what he's doing he would you know he'd get the stuff that he wanted but again i don't know that i don't know the facts i wasn't there i only know the things that i've heard i hope it's not true but you know this is the kind of shit you deal with in this yeah uh, yeah oh yeah and 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 i i stand i still stand by the guy you know I'll tell you what, the Ivan Marks thing, I'm still, this is my gray basket. Alex will tell you the Snowwalker footage to me is real. Okay, it's not a guy. I don't care what uh, Jeff said, Dr. Meldrum said. Um, I think they gave him a go-away thing to just stop calling the producer. Um, 
uh, they put what four men in the Patterson Gimlin film? Let it go. Okay, it's real. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, you sat with Gimlin, and Gimlin said, "I'd love to have the guy who came forward, but it looked pretty real. Whoever it was, he was just like, I know what I saw, but it's real. Deal with it." And that is the centerpiece of 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 Bigfoot research, Sasquatch research, is that film. Um, and that if there's one film, there's going to be other films of these creatures. So. Uh, to, to, to me, when, when people say there's no such thing as, as Bigfoot or, or that, that they prove that a hoax, it's just like, shut up, get out. Yeah. I'm not even going to waste my time with you. You're talking from an uninformed position from out of your butt. Just get away. I, I don't have time for people like that. <laughs> if you if you went down there and, you know, the, I, I, man, I go back to the 90s, early 90s investigating this stuff. And with all the, the, the four horsemen, what is it? Peter Byrne, Rene DeHinden, Grover Krantz. With, I got one too. Um, and John Green. I slept at John Green's house. John Keating and I have been friends for, for uh, what, nearly 30 years in eastern Ohio. Um, all Danny Perez. I met them all. Uh, in these conferences, even uh, the the evil Eric Beckyard, he and I went at it for years. Um, I, I fought with BFRO. They tried to hoax me a few times, but I'm at peace with them now. Um, and I think Matt's show was outstanding. And what they've done, uh, and I saw the formative years of the BFRO, is is cataloging hotspots, right? Triangulating. Yeah. And uh, to me, that's where they've been seen. That's their habitat. You know, they're not going to up and move. They're not migratory, so to speak. They generally stay within their own their own domain. So. Yeah, I think that they, you know, they, they traverse areas and they'll, you know, they'll they'll move around a bit, but not migratory. I think, you know, they just kind of they'll get up, they'll go find food over here. They'll go, you know, check things out over there. But they usually come back to the home base, at least from what I've seen and heard. And, you know, I'm nowhere near. Uh, as as experienced as the gentleman that you just uh, mentioned, which is amazing. Mm. I mean, that that you know, it's got to be um, it, 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 even for somebody like yourself, right? Who who's um, been doing this for so long, who's been into this stuff for so long, and you've been everywhere. It, it, does it still? It, I mean, does it excite you still when you ha when you get a chance to meet somebody who is of that ilk, right? When you get to meet Renee DeHinden, when you get to meet Bob Gimlin. I mean, is that exciting for you? Uh, oh, abso absolutely. I mean, Bob Gimlin, I met in 2010 at Don Keating's. Um, Don Keating, another. Yeah, yeah, he, he's Sasquatch. What's your cat's name again? This is Ollie. Okay, Ollie, I got two. You'll see them, Busby and uh, Jakers. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, any, anyways, what um, I left Bigfoot Research just before the internet came around. Yeah. I mean, just at the end of the 90s, I was done. Basically, the fox howling at the grapes after, after a while the fox said eh, i don't want no grapes and he walked away and that was kind of like me is like and i made a prediction with ufology driving out of roswell for the final time like we're no closer to a, an answer than anybody else and I, I i remember saying in the 90s you'll never catch one a bigfoot and they no. haven't um it, it, and it was nice to meet them like thumbing through john green who came up with the well he was there when bigfoot and jerry crew Right in 1958, thumbing through his card file index, it wasn't even electronic, and staying up all night till four in the morning reading everything card like this. It, it, amazing, and sleeping on his floor. And then he had a guest come in, an interloper, and I can talk about that later. I know we have a lot of stuff, but just to meet him. And I remember at the time I had the Granite State Bigfoot Society, and there was one member in that, me, and then there was the Bay State Bigfoot Society, the BSBS, twice the BS of your normal <laughs> Bigfoot organization, and and telling tell, and <laughs> telling Renee to hint in that end, but the Gay State the Bigfoot Society, no, no, the Bay State, Renee, the Gay State. So he, you know, he was he was pretty cool, and um, you know, there was some infighting there, and I got to interview Peter Byrne extensively. Mm. Um, and if you want to go to the Pang Boshe hand later in the Himalaya, the Himalayas, as he would say, in his organization, um, he's still alive, is from what I understand. Yeah, right? I believe Bless so. Bless I soul. believe so. Um, it, yeah, it, it's incredible, man. Uh, you know, these are these are legends um, in in this community. Um, while we're talking about Bigfoot, before we kind of escape the Bridgewater Triangle thing, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about. Um, the the report that came from the uh, triangle that that uh, police officer 
um, where the, the, he saw something in the rearview lights. I'll let you tell it the way you know sure, it. Sure, sure. Um, Alex did a good special on this, by the way, and I narrated yes. uh, a film by Aaron Kadji that was released uh, 10 years ago, 2013. Which I think, real quick, I don't mean to interrupt, which I think is the, like, the probably one of the best, if not the best, documentary on all things uh, Bridgewater Triangle. I mean, it was phenomenal. Yeah, he's a great director. Um, I just get ripped a new one, though, in the comments. I can't read them about my narration, but whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah, all, all the time. It's just, but it, hey, you, you make a lot of enemies in this field, and I deserve, you know, bring it, whatever you want. <laughs> Spew it on me, and I'll, I'll paddle it back to you. So I guess there are some stories that sprinkle of Bigfoot in that area, in the Hockamock Swamp region, back to the uh, 40s just after world war ii but for me um there's it was is it alan berry bigfoot on the east coast it's a white book with red writing it's one of my favorite i think it's alan berry um and in the story he has it's december of 1969 and my undergraduate alma mater was bridgewater state college and today is bridgewater state university back in the 60s it was known as the teachers college anyways there was a female dormitory there and the girls, um, oh, in December, probably six or seven o'clock at night, everybody's getting ready, studying. They come back from the library. They look out of their dorm window, and there's this silhouette of this bipedal entity on the wood line. And they could just see it. And they thought it was, you know, a, a, a creep, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a peeping Tom. And the thing just stood there. And some of the girls had an eerie feeling about them. They called the police. I believe there was some uh, some traces left, you know, some sort of evidence, maybe a footprint here or there. So then you get into the winter of 69, 70, and people in West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, and Bridgewater proper are reporting finding footprints. Uh, one chicken house was opened up and some chickens were found killed. Um, hair samples on fences. Um, and uh, some people had seen this bipedal entity, uh, cats going missing, dogs going missing. Although I don't think this creature eats dogs, maybe kills them, vicious dogs, but or cats. Uh, anyway, so so it culminates in in April, right around this time, right, 1970. Wow, 50, 53 years ago, um, where they have a a woman called in frantically. Uh, she had seen something on it, it's around her house. Get down there. So the, the police officer went down. I forget if it was West Bridgewater or Bridgewater. And he's sitting in one of those Adam 12. Do you remember those old police cars in the 60s? Sure do. I'm an old man, but but with with the uh, <laughs> the dome on the top, you know, with those circles. So he's sitting there and it's yeah, whatever, you know, easy shift, probably you know, uh, tagging his coffee. And then all of a sudden, something starts shaking the bumper. And he puts his foot on the brake, and the red lights lit up a hairy torso. He had, you know, those lights on the side. He turns it on, right, one of those spotlights. And he said that he saw what was a bipedal bear or a bear running on two feet running around the house. Now, the only bear that runs on two feet is Yogi and Boo Boo, right? And <laughs> when, when there's picnic baskets at the Jellystone, you know, um, <laughs> so 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 that made no sense. So he went back and he went sheepish sheepishly back to the station, got you know nagged and and ragged uh, for that. But uh, that is probably the seminal event. Other people reported throughout the summer of 1970 and into 1971 uh, in the Hockamock Swamp with a hunter, uh, two lovers. Uh, in their car parked on the um, periphery of the swamp saw something. So there was this uh, a lot of ancillary information coming out and sightings. And again, you can have the, the smell, you can have the sound, you can have the presence of something looking at you, the red eyes or green eyes. Uh, uh, for example, scat, um, wood on wood, um, just uh, things going missing, footprints, etc. So all throughout the, the, the over about a two-year period, there was a lot of sightings. And for all intent and purpose, that's the peak of a, big, a Bigfoot activity in the Bridgewater Triangle. And then it resurfaces God, 25, 26 years later in 1997 and 1998. 
is. I'm not doing cocaine, by the way. I'm not Zelensky. <laughs> <laughs> that little bitch. Um, anyways, uh, oh, God. It's, it's just, oh. Um, anyways, so <laughs> I told you I was going to get political. Um, so when I see the flag, I know you unfriend, unfriend, block, unfriend, block. Um, it's like it's a, it's like the mask now. I mean, come on, dude. Oh, yeah. dude uh, I know all shrinks after COVID are booked up. There's no slots. Trust me, I looked. <laughs> but oh, yeah. uh, it's just, it's just like I just see them walking. You poor thing. You scared thing. And if I told them that I I, did, I never took it, they they get horrified. Ah! I was right. Um. Anyways, okay. So I straight. So um. So in 1998, I guess the guy's name is John Baker. He's and this is weird. He's trying to, he's laying down lines to catch muskrats to eat them. Yeah. I mean, that's some backwoods. That's some <laughs> Alabama shit right there, right? I mean, down, 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 down. Anyway, so he's, his story is essentially at night, um, moon out. He's, um, it's, a, it's a winter's night, and he's paddling or he's in his boat laying these trip or whatever he was doing. And he hears, he has a sense of being watched. And then he hears footfall. And the way he described it was, it was, he could hear ice breaking as if he were on the shore. And then it smelled to high hell, right? So um, that's the crux of the story. And um, he said that he saw the, a silhouetted being there. You know, kind of like what Joe DeAndre and Joe's is really the first, you know, about Joe, right? He yeah. was the one at Claybanks who really had the first encounter. And Alex did a marvelous piece, Alex Petikoff. And I recommend anybody watching this to check out his piece on Joe DeAndre, uh, the original Brid Bridgewater Triangle site in 1978. So, but that's that's uh, uh, essentially the crux of that sighting. And he saw her silhouette under the moonlight, uh, freaked out got out of the area and then during covid which was probably the best year of my life 2020 because i was hiking walking out and nobody was around it was nobody. great and and by the way during 2020 all the creatures came in closer right to habitats too so yes, it was for did. anybody else and alex was bigfoot and, and um anybody who did that they were really in a unique situation but anyways i went out my kayak and um, they said that that john baker was I've, I've, the hockamock river or the town river, um, which are streams um, that, that run throughout the Bridgewater Triangle. So I've heard town river, I've heard Hockham, but I went down both of them in my kayak, Taunton River too. And uh, the the uh, town river is, man, you got to pull your way through. It was a real dry summer, if you remember, 2020. Beautiful weather, perfect weather. That's because there was no uh, contrails and they didn't even do chemtrails for a while they were too busy launching starlink um <laughs> going on. but but anyways <laughs> i can go anyway so i went in there and the thing is i had to push over i found the spot i looked at my maps found the spot to park my car i i put my kayak in i had to push through about 50 yards of reeds okay to get out there and then finally this little narrow river um and I had a feeling that, geez, I don't think a human being has been down this for quite some time, right? Yeah. So, and even the turtles look at looking at me like, what the, f who the hell, what are you doing here, you know? So I, I went down there. And anyways, um, of course, my phone goes dead, okay? So I'm down this meandering stream and hanging out. It's getting dark. And I said, oh, okay, time to go. And I memorized, you know, where this tree was. Or was it that tree? Or, or no, it was that tree, you know? It was so it took an hour and a half, man. I was freaking to find where I put in. And I went down like five different paths that just led to nowhere. And then I just I said a little prayer. I'm I'm a trad cat, traditional Catholic. I'm a daily communicant. We're in the end times. I'm an eschatologist. Um Trust me, we are. Uh, oh, I believe it, 100%. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk absolutely. about that, too. Yeah, yeah, cool. Let's do it, man. Let's. Anyway, so I finally found my way out. Said a prayer to St. Anthony. And he gave me a WTF, but I got out. But anyways, I went down this. <laughs> it, 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 to where I was, there were tons of grapes. If you were a creature in that area, man, you could make wine. There were so mm. many grapes and food sources, untouched, tons of turtle, fish, catfish popping out. So it was, to, to go down that, that was really, really freaky. Um, and I can understand why John Baker would have been freaked out 
at night, if it was like late at night or early in the morning, to have encountered a creature in that area. So that, for the mo okay, and then we'll get to a hoax. So that, for the most part, is Bigfoot. And Joe DeAndrade, you have to salute him. He's never wavered on his story. He's always said the same thing. He had the first newsletter dude back in the 70s. Um, I remember Mysterious Monsters. I think that came out in like 1975 or 76, right? Do you remember that documentary? You can see it. And, and uh, he was... That's what set him off on his quest. And in search of, I remember watching that. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's it. Then comes 2009. I'm doing a Bridgewater Triangle tour, a bus tour, basically called the Mass Mystery Tour, right? Like the Magical Mystery Tour from the Beatles and sold tickets. We sold it out. And one cat, he's a, he's a ghost researcher. <sighs> I, ghost researchers live in a world of hyperbole, exaggeration, and embellishment they're full of shit and uh, <laughs> I, I i believe in ghosts i believe in reincarnation i believe in the afterlife i believe in demons but i don't believe in ghost researchers it's just oh the they, they just anyways this ghost researcher says where can i go find bigfoot and i tell him on the elm street section in bridgewater this cornfield it's a, it's not a well it's a it's an offshoot of a main road and sure as shit he comes back Two days later, I got casts. And you can see this. You can look it up online, my presentation on YouTube. I've been ratioed and throttled down, but who cares? Um, it's way too late in my life to be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. um, but but um, he, 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 somebody like you or Alex could, this is his first time out looking for Bigfoot. He pulls this cast like this big. Now, are you kidding me? I call bullshit. And um, it's like, it was weird. And then he showed in the mud these perfect footprints. And it's, come on, dude. And uh, every, then the ghost community defended him. Oh, you hoaxed it. Then they claimed that I hoaxed. They went down and planted footprints for him to find. They're just delusional. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, I'd taken much harder drugs than I was taking at the time. So it was um, <laughs> just, just, just for them to accuse me, accuse me of planting footprints for them to find. How stupid. That's how dumb. This guy's from Vermont. And just, anyways, so he had these fake uh, footprints. And I went on the tour. I had to bring you cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show people. Good thing. Then, then after, after that, I, I called. You know, said he hoaxed it. And I had been involved with other hoaxes like Eric Beckyard, Scott McNabb in 1997 in Tennessee had hoaxed a, a Bigfoot encounter. He, I had figured out because I had a copy of the Patterson Gimlin footprint. Everybody has a copy of the Patterson Gimlin footprint. It's been duplicated so many times. And he sent me that. And I went, wait a minute. I took out my the same thing. <laughs> so, so I've been involved. And what was the other one? There's another one I can't think of. Um, that, so they called me a hoaxer because I uncovered these hoaxes. Mm -hmm. Now, if if you hoax somebody, my thoughts are that you should come forward. Ah, we got you. Like that. Remember who's that? Rick Dyer with the fake body. Remember him? Yeah, who, oh yeah. And, and who's the other guy? Tom. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, but Basalti, Basalti, Tom. Somebody in chat, if you knew Tom Biscardi. There we go. Biscardi. Gotcha. Yeah, Biscardi. Um, guys like that were hoaxing, and um, you're going to get caught. I mean, and, and the thing about Bigfoot research is old guys like me, as we moved out, right, and the other guys died, there's a whole new breed that moved in, and there's a breed behind them. And the reason why people are watching tonight and the people are still interested, because they know there's something to the story, and they've seen the Patterson-Gimlin film, or they know somebody who saw something. So I like to say that I can't say that I believe in Bigfoot because I've never seen one or been encountered one, but I believe in people who claim to have encountered Bigfoot. Yeah. And I've, I've a hundred stories I could tell you. And there's no way as an actor, a failed actor, um, there's no way these people were acting, you know, crying and being shaken. I was thinking, you know, Oh boy, if I could act like that, I would have made it big. I'm yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but we, it, yeah. You come, it, it, but this is one thing that we, I've talked about a lot on here and I, and, and I think it's important, um, you know, it, when you have thousands and thousands of these reports across the globe, um, it, when you get when you take a, a large just take a large chunk of them and sit these people down and really take a look at who's telling this these encounters, um, these are not crazy people for the most part. You're talking about from all walks of life, engineers, doctors, nurses, garbage men, uh, your postal guy, um, you know, shoe salesman, just regular folks. Uh, and my mother, who was not really a believer in this stuff until this channel started, I think because she was then she was able to have a front row seat to 
seeing people discuss these encounters right in front of her, right? Um, where she never really knew that this stuff existed or where to go look for it before. Now it's her son's doing it and she gets to see regular people and she's like, wow, I, I, I don't, you know, I'm sorry. I even question any of this because when you see somebody like my friend, Donnie Miller, and you see his visceral reaction to what happened to him in Florida, there's no way you can dispute it. There just isn't. Or if he's acting, give me some lessons. Yeah, I could have used right. those. I had yeah. 20 Emmy nominations. I only won five. <laughs> that still <laughs> bugs me to this day. Um, but 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 you're right. If you look at it, and a lot of the people that live in in remote areas, right, right, in um, in not urban areas, uh, but suburban and rural, with uh, they you know they got woods behind them, right? There's nothing behind them for acres and acres, sometimes miles, and that's where their fathers saw it. Their grandparents had it. I mean, Alex has investigated cases in New Hampshire where these lands, tribal lands, are belonged to Native Americans. There's a litany that goes back, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years. And if you look at wild man encounters as the American uh, explorer was was moving west and, uh, and, and killing and raping Native Americans and taking appropriating their land, as they were moving west, they would have these wild man encounters, right? And um, if I've got a whole, maybe someday, man, we should do 19th century Bigfoot encounters. I've got oh, a whole awesome. lit, oh, I got a whole litany of articles. And you say, why would they print that? And it sounds like Bigfoot, but they're calling it a, a hairy wild man. Um, so, so there's been a litany of stories. It's not since 1967. It's not just since 1958 and Jerry Crew. You know that that story was what really got the headlines. And by the way, um, I don't know if Alex told you, but Ray Wallace, who was uh, they attributed all the Bigfoot prints to him. You know, just like Doug and Dave did all the crop circles, which is bull. Um, yeah, bull. But I corresponded with him for a better part of two years. And um, you know, he told wild stories. I still have the letters. Alex has seen them. And basically, he said he had a petting zoo, and he communicated with Bigfoot. And he saw Bigfoot on demand. And then he, at the end of his, his life, he, he took credit for all Bigfoots and his family. He said, oh, yeah, he was responsible for all that. They showed his fake you know, feet and everything like that. But um, he was batshit crazy. So mm. it's just, he was cuckoo, but he was a nice man. And he wrote to me and I still cherish those letters to this day. So there's just too many people. And again, the reason why you're interested, he said, Hey, wait a minute. I don't know if it was a few years ago, several years ago as a kid. Hey, wait a minute. There's something to this. Yeah. And again, as a contrarian uh, with the fake news, whatever they say, I contradict. Okay. Mm. Um, if they say something, they mean the opposite. So, uh, if they said there's nothing to that, okay, there's something to that. If people say that's hoax footage and Bigfoot, I'm I'm not going to just summarily dismiss that. Um, uh, like the Paul uh, Freeman footage for years, oh. I remember seeing that on TV, ninety four, ninety five, and I knew that's legit. That's legit. Yeah, that's yeah. And today now people are saying, yeah, I, I think it is legit. Um, and and the Marks footage with the cone head jumping around, that's weird. It, it could be a kid in a suit. I don't know, but it had like a broken or a limping leg. And then um, the pictures that were taken, uh, Ray Crow, do you remember him? Western Bigfoot Society back in the eighties and nineties. I, I gave, think I do. Okay. Okay. He did the Western Bigfoot Society, the track record, I think you called it. And um, he used to collect all sorts of uh, uh, incidental sightings of Bigfoot or stories he'd heard or stories he heard from somebody who heard or heard it from somebody, which is Bigfoot, right? It was a call a class C report, right? Yeah, class C, yeah. And then I have class D's from New Hampshire, if you want to talk about those later, which is I heard it from a guy who heard it from a guy. That's a class D, right, even though right. the DFR <laughs> doesn't recognize it. But Ray used to have all these stories, and he'd go to hot spots and a story about a Girl Scout camp where this thing came in, was looking at the girls and hung out the whole, whole night and creeping them out and wouldn't let them leave. Um, footprint encounters he was good friends with peter byrne larry lund have you heard of larry larry yeah. was in my opinion um uh, he was uh, the foremost authority on 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 the patterson gimlin film got to know bob gimlin um good friend of peter burns i think what is it frame 357 i used to know this i think it is i think it's 357 yeah, yeah. okay or that's the gun i have i mean i, mean, I forget um but uh he Froze. Then there was a guy named M.K. Davis, and recently, I guess AI just did this, but he stabilized that. Remember that? 
the yeah. footage and he figured out you know there's female and then eric beckard saw like three other big foots but somebody said there's something in another part of the frame if you look it's kind of like a rorschach ink blot um but it, it just shows the thing just ambled away you know, a huge big mama too right yeah she's big. uh and maybe trying to lure them away from where it's it's youngins were right who knows but it still stands today that film is the cornerstone of Sasquatch research. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, and it's, it's amazing that, you know, this this far along, that, that is still the best piece of uh, visual evidence that we have, um, you know, of it. it it's amazing. Uh, and I think that anybody who gets into this field, you know, that's probably at least one of the first things that you see that makes you go, whoa, like gives you that that charge, you know, where you go, I got to find out more about this. Um, I remember the first time I saw it and I just was like, holy cow, well, that would be the coolest thing if this was real. And, um, you know, here you, we are you know, you, you're no longer saying if. No, no, absolutely not. No, I, I know that, that there's no there's no question about it. Um, just like many other things, uh, UFOs included. So uh, with that really bad segue, um, there uh, while we're you know the the triangle um had a very um pretty prominent ufo sighting by two um journalists correct radio broadcasters or journalists yeah um uh, uh i should know the names jerry lopes and the other guy great aaron captured that the interview and i mean that that was a centerpiece of that film um basically it looked like home plate yeah that was in the middle 1979 i believe in the middle of a ufo flap i want to say in the spring of 79 jerry lopes and um i can't remember anyways two guys they i think they had gone to the dog track the taunton dog track and that's a site of strange phenomena balls of light there's been bigfoot sightings down there strange tracks weird creatures road runners running across route 138 have you ever heard of those yeah people driving down the highway and something darts across it's like looks like a hairy man beast anthropoid and they think they hit it they close their eyes and they stop and there's nothing there yeah uh, that just shows the weirdness of the creature but they saw this ufo and then it was verified with um uh, other sightings they checked in the newspaper other people have reported seeing it so um you know i i, I believe in ufos it is no longer if it, it it's it's more how and who mm. i know why and i know i know if but how and who and where where are you from um but if this thing just silent craft just like the phoenix lights but a home plate sailed over their head blacked out the stars and just cruised off then zipped off there and there's been other uh, balls of light you know people literally want to call it swamp gas and i have to give it to them if they say they saw balls of light in the uh, hockamock swamp that's swamp gas I, I don't know if i can argue with that you know will of the wisp uh san elmo's fire you know balls uh ball lightning whatever it is but um yeah there were there were ufo scene then there was another one 1973 allegedly a ufo landed um in the parking lot of a restaurant, Joseph's restaurant, I think it was called. Um, some bizarre UFO encounters. And of course, across Massachusetts, um, there have been various sightings all the way out to the Andresons and the Berkshires. Um, and the, the great flaps, if you look at the great UFO flaps in, uh, in Massachusetts, there was one in, in 1947, along with Roswell, late summer 1947. There was one in 1966, spring of 66. I might have seen one with my family, don't know. Um, there was one in 1979. There was one in 80 in the year 2000 as well. So there are spates where when these appear, I, I nothing's random, right? It's a superior intelligence to us. It, it has purpose behind it. Sure. They, it's seen for a reason. So, and, and, and I was in Gulf Breeze, Florida in the nineties. And there are some kooks there, like looking there, said, look at that red light moving back and forth. And I kept telling them that's a light on the mast of a sailboat. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, look at that light. No, there's Pensacola Naval Air Station, Pensacola International Airport. There's Herbert Field, Duke Field, Softly Field. These were all military bases, the Nexus, and they were seeing military aircraft. Um, that said, in Gulf Breeze, 1980s, Ed Walters, have you heard of the Gulf Breeze sightings? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. So I believe they're real. I interviewed Ed. 
I pissed him off because it was a Braves playoff game when I called him in 97, but he <laughs> talked to me. I, and they did find a model, but it's it's there's no way all those photos and other people photographed it. So it, there was um, a, a, a litany of sightings. Um, I don't think he hoaxed them. Other people captured them, and he wishes he never saw them. And he took some wild video in the 90s about these um, – uh, a craft, if you've ever seen it, where it seems to shoot out a, a jet of water or pull up water, and but you can see the shadow in the water. There's just no way to hoax it, you know. Um, recently, have you ever heard of Billy Meyer, the one armed guy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I was watching something there, and there's something to that too, folks. Sorry, it's very weird, man. It's uh, very strange. I don't like his take on Jesus, but um, um, everything he says, and it just there's just some people. They're magnets to this. And also, I believe that if I'm standing next to a, a seer, right, um, that I can't see it, but they can because whatever these vehicles are, they can somehow s make themselves stealthy or, or refract light. I can't explain it. But I'm just saying this. You could see something if you're common to this phenomena, and I couldn't. And I accept that. Mm -hmm. It's just because I can't see it because I'm an egghead, you know. So, um, <laughs> but 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 there's just so many. And I, you know, when I went down, I went to Gulf Breeze, Ed Walters. I went to Area 51. I actually went on Area 51 before they seized the land, Freedom Ridge, White Sides, um, uh, 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 Shag Harbor, Nova Scotia, and UFO crash, October 4th, 1967, Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, uh, December 9th, 1965. Went down the village in western Pennsylvania, Stan Gordon. That's a Westmoreland County UFOs and Bigfoot. Have you ever looked into that? Yeah, yeah. Big correlations oh. between the two. Oh, there. Crazy, huge two nine footers. Yeah, nine footers. Um, I get skin bumps. Where else did I do in UFO? Oh, I went out to the Skunk Works, uh, the Antelope Valley, uh, oh San Luis Valley. I studied cattle mutilation. Um, oh, Roswell. I went three times. I was there at the 50th anniversary, and I remember it was right at the end of my. UFO investigations. I was big into X Files. Long hair down a year. Had a crush on Scully. Um, but uh, it's, it's just, I remember driving out of Roswell, nineteen ninety eight. The last time I said, you know something, when when they come out with with and the government comes out and says UFOs exist, nobody's going to care. It's not even going to make the news. It won't even be between uh, uh, the weather and sports. And lo and behold, December twenty seventeen, the Navy right with the that uh, was it, the Nimitz incident Tic -tac and all these Nimitz, yeah, you know. And then who's the dude there? You see him there with the uh, beard. He said he worked with a UFO study group. I forget the guy's name. And then you have um, uh, the producer Jer Jeremy Corbell Lock. Lockley or Corbell, right? Who's done a lot of things. Bob Lazar is back Bob in the Lazar, news. Bob Lazar, yeah. I believe Bob, Bob Lazar. And it's just, oh, yeah, they, me too. And they just try to, it, it's just accepted as real. It's Occam's razor, man. That's just, it's, 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 we have to understand that we may not be able to understand, right? Yeah, that's it. That's really what it boils down to. But the problem be, is, I think, what really gets in the way, for the most part, is ego. Ego gets in the way. People want to be the one to say, I know this. I know that. My Bigfoot research team is doing what's right, and you're not. Um, come be a part of this special group. Uh, and I talk about this often. If, if, if the ego could be left out of this, we, we, you, you know, we could all work together much better there wouldn't be as much uh, infighting, backstabbing, you know, clicks yeah. and all that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I know something that you don't know. Yeah, yeah. And, and no, because I hold this as a belief. Anything you say is false. It's like MUFON. MUFON stands for Many Useless Fools Organizing Nothing. Mass <laughs> MUFON was, oh, it was, it was, Mass MUFON was a clown show, clown world for, for decades. And it's, I belonged to MUFON and I, for, for 20 years. And then finally said, enough. And this, they, everybody thought they'd make a buck, right? I got the UFO study. We're going on. They were a crack team with all these electrical instruments that weren't designed for UFO study. And we're going to find something. And it's just, it's come on. So <laughs> I just, and, and the BFRO really got militant, right? But I have to give Matt, salute him. I thought his show, well, Finding Bigfoot was real cool. I thought it was an excellent show. And they did, at the end of the day, we can say now 25, 30 years later, they've come back with some extraordinary data, but they're not going to share that. Or they'll say, we have exclusivity or NDA, sign this NDA or I'll sue you. We'll tell you what, try me, try suing me. Mm. You know, you can get shit for me. No, why? Well, and I'll get you my, my, you want my New York guy, my LA guy. You know, right? <laughs> it's, 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 
they say that. Um, but oh. but it's it's that they, they won't get along because everybody thinks they're going to make a million dollars off of that. I tell you what, the only thing you're going to make is is you're going to get you're going to go broke spending your say it's if you do it for the heart and for the love of the of the science and it is a science it is it is a, a zoology but cryptozoology right um and i'll tell you you ain't gonna get one mm -mm. no you might and if you go in there trying to kill one they know they sense right they have this in intuition if you go in there, like I said about Alex, or you just say, "Hey, I'm just here chilling. I have to. I'm armed for not for you, for a bear or a cougar, or whatever." I mean, it's it's, and they use the scout method, right? Triangulation, right? Where they put a, a scout here to watch you out, and here over here's mom with the. It's it, it's a complex society, family structure too. Um, and yeah, I think they're more. I mean, I I I I, I, I usually call them beings or a race because. I, to me, they're much more like us in the way that they think and move um, than an animal. Uh, uh, Though smarter than us, okay? I mean, yeah, yeah. What, what's, what's a human being does? It, it, it mines, it manufactures, it pollutes, it packages, it distributes, it procures, it unwraps, it consumes, it disposes, it excretes, and then it posts. That's it, dude. That's my alien report. I could go back to the planet of Zeltar tonight, and that's where I report to humans. Don't even bleep and bother. You know, drive by, fly by. Yeah, and we're getting we're getting dumber and dumber and dumber, being lazier and lazier and lazier. And and I can say for myself, fatter and fatter and fatter. So oh, it's just, I'm right there with you. You know, and and, and a lot of people because with they locked us down with this deadly killer disease that that we never saw anybody die over but we had locked and all we did was cheat us so you know, i began eating ice cream and i got diabetes out of it and i'm a blimp now. so it's it's um it, 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 it if you do the study and we all want to work together but the people that hide their data my suggestion is walk away mm -hmm. you know they're much better people that share it um you know, think of the people that we talked to today. John Green shared his data with me. John yeah. Green can share his data with a stranger. If Peter Byrne can share his data, uh, if Grover Krantz can converse with me, then then what are you doing? You know, yeah, and uh, and the BFRO they kick you out and kick you. I mean, it, it's like <laughs> you're in this now. You're not, and I'm head of this section. And this section. It's like come on. I agree, hundred percent. Now that said, I'm a historian. Mm -hmm. I don't like going out on expeditions and camping. I'll go out for walks, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not a, a diehard stay out in the woods, you know, out in the bush. It ain't for me, you know. I need my CPAP. But it's just, uh, <laughs> it, it's from judgments from the history, taking a historical record of 150 years of data, right? I mean, even pre-Civil War, uh, when they were migrating west of the Mississippi, um, virtually every state has a lore of this, even even Rhode Island. I mean, where you are now, I call it the T area, right? Yes. Where you have Rhode Island and Connecticut and Massachusetts meet. And I've always been convinced for over 25 years that in that area, draw a circle, that that's a hot spot. Um, a story I got out of that, I believe, was it, was it Thomaston? <sighs> Anyways, um, the story was she has a horse, she had chickens, she's finding footprints, she finds hair hair on the fence, um, half-eaten pumpkins, tomatoes, but something she said got into her chicken house, and whatever it is had to have a, a, an opposable thumb. Is that how you said that? Yep. An okay. It lift up the latch to get in there and eat the bit the chicken's head off. Now either it was Alex Cooper, Alice Cooper, or it was a uh, you know uh, some sort of creature, and then she went out on her horse and the horse got creeped. The horse wouldn't go stop and it would start bucking. And uh, she felt she was being looked at and just out of the corner of her eye, right? Is um, that she saw uh, what she thought was a, 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 a humanoid, carry large humanoid. Um, you bang on the vape? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but it's, her name was Patty too. And I investigated that. The BFRO gave me that in 1996 or nine, no, 97. And then the other BFRO case I had was 97 or 98 in October Mountain, which is near Lenox, Mass, in the Berkshires. In I know October, it very well. Yep. Yeah, and that's got that's got some creep to it too. There, we yeah. we did uh, the Hoosack tunnels out that way. We did a, uh, on my show, the folklorist, www.folklorist.tv. Um, we did a segment on that, but um, I interviewed a guy, and the story goes like this: He was a he was a had a PhD and a, a degree after a PhD, which means that he had student loans that he it would take two billion years to pay off, right? <laughs> so, 
And at the end of the day, and at the end of the day, when it's not worth it, really don't go to college. Don't. It's a waste. Uh, homeschool your kids. Homeschool your kids. Don't go to college. God, we're going through this right now with my with my stepdaughter. Man, it's yeah. like are you going to have two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt and for four yeah. years of school? Well, I worked three jobs part time and went to Bridgewater State as my undergrad. Then I went to Stats at Northeastern. But um, it's it's dude six hundred fifty a semester dollars. <laughs> So I, I was lucky that I got out, but um, it's 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 a racket. And plus, the, the uh, they're teaching you full balls communism, right? Yeah. All right, and uh, it's just enough. And your flag of hate, I get it. I'm not on your flag. You know, I'm not part of your movement. I get it. Okay. And and I'll be held responsible for all the sins of my ancestors. But I will say this: my great 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 grandfather was William Tecumseh Sherman. Bang! Burned Atlanta. No reparations for me. So it's just uh, I, my grandfather. And then I can go all the way back to the Mayflower. So I understand my privilege, but the same token, I, we're all just struggling to get by, right? Oh, well, everyone is, right? I mean, if you're just, not part of the 1%, you're struggling to get by every day. Oh, uh, and what is it? 40% of all the wealth was created during COVID. A lot of stuff went out. They put up these 5G towers when we were hiding behind our curtains. And then um, they launched, Musk launched all these Starlinks. I still think Musk, good dude, but I still think he's the, he's checking all the boxes on the Antichrist checklist. That's just me. But um, but I'm, I'm glad that um, I have a Twitter burner account, even though I've been throttled down and ratioed. But um, it's, uh, it's good to the, that... Free speech is hate speech, right? So, yeah. okay, I'm I'm straight. Let me go back to to that. So, in in in, in the, what what people believe, um, they the 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 thing that they want to defend most is their ignorance, right? Mm -hmm. And like you said, easy uh, earlier about ego and humility. I'll tell you right now, dude. I'm not as smart as I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. I want to learn, and uh, I, I stand corrected. I'm this. I'm not a sociopath to the point that everything I say that I, you know, there's uh, there's there's no such thing as Bigfoot because I I can't understand it. There's no such thing mm. as UFOs because I can't understand it. Yeah, the Loch Ness monster was a hoax. Serpentine anomalies. Um, um, it, it's just we again. It's it's the unknown, the supernatural. I I recognize it. I just can't comprehend it, but I know it's out there. Right. And and, um, and the people that say that they've got all the answers are probably the furthest away from the truth. Agreed. So Agreed. I just I just rolled down the hill. Dude. You're good. <laughs> I Don't worry about it. With all that talk. You're good. But, um, yeah, man, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's it's a scary world we live in, um, you know, and, and uh, that that's such a you know, one of the things that I, I try really hard to continue to keeping the forefront of this for me, right. Is, is the fun. If it's not fun anymore, I'm just not going to do it. Right. If I, if I don't find this fun, I'm, I'm stopping. Uh, I think a lot of people end up getting this place where it's a competition and it's like, it's not a competition. It shouldn't be a competition because number one, what are you competing for? Nobody here is getting rich off of Bigfoot. It ain't happening. This is just not the topic. You're not getting rich. Um, number two, I don't know that this will ever be solved in, in my lifetime or anybody's lifetime fully. Uh, I just think that there's way too much going on there for it to be fully solved. So I don't know why the, this whole competitive thing, the secrecy and all that shit, you know, like you said, just go. If you're hiding shit, if you did, just just go. It's this is not the place for you anymore. You've lit, you know, you've overstayed your welcome. Um, I'll get you an mm. Uber. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's that's what drove me out of it in the nineties. Yeah, and here it is, twenty five years or, or oh, twenty three years later. I left ninety nine. It's still going on the infighting, and it's like and it's the newbies and the people. I'm a hunter. Okay, I get it. You're a hunter. You got rifles. I bet you're a good game hunter. Yep, yep. And you go out in the bush and you can sit out uh, in in a flat and hunt deer. I get that. Yeah, um, but just because um, you can't understand it. Um, can I give you a quick story? I'm out at Don's conference, Don uh, Keating, and he's having an after conference get together at a bar. So there's people around and there's this big guy and I'm six, two. And this guy's like six, six. And he's in his camo, chewing some tobacco and he's bumping me. 
Like, yeah, 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 Bigfoot, ha, ha, laughing at me. It's just like, because uh, I had spoken at the, at the conference I, about the Bridgewater Triangle, the hoax, too. Um, and I'm saying, wow, dude's bump. And I'm thinking, get a bottle of beer in case I have to use it. You know what I'm saying? Because this guy's yeah. going to, he's going he's gonna to haul off and hit me here, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'll bottle you. SOB, don't, don't, you know. So, anyway, so I said, What's what, what and I finally said, Dude, what, what's your problem? Why are you bumping me? Why are you being like this? You know, that, that, and I got all snippy and got Boston in his face. And I said, Come on, man, I'm just out here. And here, you, what's, what's, what's wrong with you? You know, you're a hunter. I get that. I seen one. What? I seen one. He, now his tears, he's a big baby. His eyes are welling up with water. I seen one. You seen one. What'd you see? Well, I know every, I don't know what I saw. Okay, cool. And I said, That's why you're here, man. Just consider yourself lucky, special, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but he was described, I know everything, and but he saw this thing behind a tree. And, and I said, let it be. In, in Ohio, you know, people laughed at Don uh, and Jody Cook when they said there's stuff in Ohio. Well, yeah. there's mines, dude, and down there. And it's it's a, there's Eastern Ohio, there's weird locations in Vorta. Anyway, so I got him to to, to, to say, hey, you know, I, it's, I don't understand and don't, you just look at it as a gift, not as a curse that, that this happened to you. And don't don't fucking bump me again, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so and then let me finish the October Mountain story. So this yeah. the story was this guy. I'm so scattered, dude. I have ADD. All right. Um, yep. And um, I don't think there's a pill for me. I've got enough already for my BP. Um, so, anyways, this guy calls me up and his BFRO gave me the case. October Mountain. He's going out on his hike with a stick, comes up over Lidge, a ridge. It's almost like a I forget the guy's name, Todd Deese or whatever. He comes up and he sees this thing kneeling down, banging. It looks like dirt. There's high grass with a rock. And then the thing puts up his nose and he was downwind of it, right? Not up when they you know, the thing stiff around. You know, he smells something. You know, maybe did he smell him, right? And then that he keeps, he said he watched her for like five minutes, like it was eating grubs or something like that. And that's kind of like the Walter Bowers story, I think, from New Hampshire, 1977. But like he's eating something. And then he said he got scared and then he ran down the hill and then he thought the thing chased him. But that was the, and he was in tears when he talked to me. I said, dude, it's just like you walked into a situation and it's, um, you're lucky to, that. It, not, it didn't throw the rock at you. So yeah. um, there's just stories like that. And here's another one. That, let me tell you while we're doing this. So John, this is my favorite. John Green, I'm at his house. And um, this guy, Mike McDonald, okay, from Hamilton, Ontario, big burly guy, bald guy with a bandana, had been out at Harrison Lake on the Harrison Island in Harrison Lake in Harrison Hot Springs where John Green lived, right? There's a litany of sightings in that area. And he had been living on the island for over a month. And what forced him in is he was down to half a sleeve of saltines, right? He was out of food. And so he came in about two in the morning, sat around. And I have the recording, by the way, of this. Talked to me, Chuck Story, uh, Mark DeWorth, and Don Keating. And um, basically told the story that goes something like this. And it's uh, he's out on Harrison Island. He'd been tracking some creature, a baby, a juvenile, as he called it, scat, footprints, uh, a lair, hair samples. Something went into his camp, he thinks, and what rummaged his food. Um, he had seen a bear out there, too. But again, this is an island. The, the, um, the, Game warden or environmental officer, I used to know his name, came out to visit him, check on him once a week. So he's out there. He's got video camera. I got a cat, too, by the way. Uh, that's my cat um, he's got two cats. But he's, he's gathering evidence. And so he finally comes in, and he's, like, wide-eyed. And the story was the night before, this is what happened. So he's, he's getting ready to go to bed in his tent. He's up on a hill. A sailboat had come in, or a powerboat had come in and docked down at the bottom of the hill. I think a father, mother, and a, and a kid, or two kids. So he's getting ready to shut it down right for the night. And so it's, it's, it's a full moon or a bright moon. And he's uh, zips down there, gets some shut eye, lying in a sleep bag. Then all of a sudden he felt his body move as if they're heavy footfall. Like, holy shit. And he knew. There's that smell again. There's that smell. He's right near me. And, and he said that he saw a shadow, right, come over. 
and he's thinking, this is how weird it was. He's thinking it's a bear, right? Uh, I don't know if it's a Kodiak. Was a brown bear in there, I think. Out in that area. Anyways, he's thinking bear. Here it is. He's hunting Bigfoot. And he's thinking bear. So he gets out his grizzly mace, right? He gets it out and he, he says on one, two, three, unzips it and sprays the mace. The nozzle's pointing this way. He maces himself. Oh. So <laughs> he, he climbs out of the tent. The tent oh. is uprooted. He's stumbling in his underwear, sleeping back at his feet, rolling down the hill. Ah, it's a fucking Sasquatch. It's a fucking Sasquatch. And the guy comes out with his gun on the boat. Like, Who are you? <gasps> well, calm down. Here's a shot of whiskey. Here's another one. I'm going to go get your bag up the hill. You can sleep on the dock tonight. Just chill. Goes up to get the bag, brings it down to the dock. So Mike's sleeping in the bag, <sighs> heart racing. Didn't believe in God at that point. He said, whoa, whoa, take it easy. Stop that. That's, this is Busby. Come on, get down. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he's trying to jack me for treats. Come on, get, get. Anyways, anyways, so he's lying on the dock, right? And he hears on the side of the woods, right, near the river. Get down. Get down, you jerk. Um, and then all of a sudden, he hears this thing enter the water. Oh, and he's freaking out. And I think he soiled himself. He wet himself, right? So he's now he's hearing bubbles. It's getting closer and closer, right? And then he said, underneath his, underneath his head, suddenly you he heard scratching on the dock, right? And he went, oh, dear God, I believe. If there's a God, please save me, please. He starts praying, and the thing, then it stops, and the thing, he can hear it swim away in the bubbles, and he can hear it get out of the water and go up the bank. And he said the musty smell was there. And that was essentially his story, and it's like he told us literally hot off the presses. So Don, Mark, and Chuck, we drove him to the Sasquatch Symposium, uh, and he met with uh, Steenberg, and Danny Perez, and the four horsemen were there. And I don't think Peter Byrne was there, but Renee was there. I think Grover was there, and uh, John was not there, nor was uh, Peter. And what are you doing? Come on, get down, get down. So um, that was a pretty cool story in that we had heard that firsthand. That's probably one of the most memorable encounters that I, that I got a chance to uh, um yeah. <laughs> Bernie's saying I get a, I do get a workout. I get involved in this. This is why Bernie, man, the, the shit is real, dude. I, I, I can't explain it, but it's it, it. Anybody who says there's no such thing, just walk away. Whatever you say, boss, you bore me. You ain't, it's uh, do the research and come back. Read all the books that 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 you've read that you know and that I've read. Then come on, sell me. Just show me that you know and you can't. But anyways, those those are some great stories. Um, and that this thing has been seen. In every state, Australia. I was reading a book. There's one about Great Britain has Bigfoot. Uh, in fact, Nick, uh, Nick, not Redmond, what's his name? No, Redfern spoke at my mass monster bash a couple of times. He did one on the British Bigfoot. But there's there's uh, the Yaren, the Yowie, Captar in Russia. There's 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 uh, uh, Orang different... Pendek, which is the smaller one. Yeah, they're all over. Uh, you just don't make this stuff up, man. Every, it's like the flood, the the epic of Gilgamesh and Noah's flood. Yeah. There's a flood story in, in every religion. Dude, if you fall off, you're on your own. The coyotes get you. I had a guy on this show not too long ago uh, who goes by the name Yowie Dan. He's from yeah. Australia. Yeah. He didn't. He was part of a documentary that was filmed down there called, um, uh, uh, was it Elusive, I think, maybe? Or was that the okay. other one? I think it was yeah. Elusive. Um, and they did too. Uh, and, and he sends me stuff all the time still. And he sends me pictures of tracks that he finds down there in those forests. And those forests down there are like prehistoric, man. There's some crazy, crazy forests that you would, I, I wouldn't be surprised seeing a dinosaur out there. Uh, Never looking, mind. Yeah. Look at Tanzania, right? Oh, what's, what's the Tasmania, right? And the islands off the coast there that, that literally is a snapshot in time, a prehistoric time. Yeah. I think uh, my favorite name is the Yahoo. Don't they call it the Yahoo down there too or something? I've heard There's, that. They got like four or five names for yeah. it. But yeah. 
Yeah, it, but it's all around the world. The uh, Himalayas, uh, Sir John Hunt photograph, you know, Hillary flip flopping. Sir Edmund Hillary, by the way, was the second guy to climb the top. It was uh, Tenzing Norgay, the Sherpa, was the first one on, but we, we're not supposed to say it. You gotta give it to the, the Englishman, but he was the second. But uh, Hillary encountered one, Sir Edmund Hillary did, but he recanted his story. And, and there's, there's just a litany of tales of finding um, footprints and seeing these bipedal entities at 25,000 feet, 20,000 feet, right? Well, and Teddy just, Roosevelt's friend, didn't he? Isn't there an account, uh, a, an account of Teddy Roosevelt's friend? That's, I think that's a Charlie Bauman, is it, right? Isn't that yes, the one that yes. got carried in a sleeping bag or something like that? And he got carried to a lair? No, and... that was the um, Ostman, right? Uh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, Albert that, Ostman. Yes, yeah, correct. I confused that with Ape Canyon. We did another segment. Oh, that's another that. crazy, crazy oh, yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. But just finishing the bomb, uh, Osprey was the one carried in his sleeping bag to the lair and actually lived with a Bigfoot family for, I don't know, a day, two days. I'm not sure. I forget. And then he escaped, right? And then there was um, uh, the, the Ape Canyon, basically miners near Mount St. Helen, 1924, I think there were four of them went out to this cabin. They were doing some mining. I think the precious metal was gold or was it silver? Either way, they were there. And apparently when they were washing up, they saw this hairy entity and they did what any white man with a gun did. He shot at it. <laughs> and legend has that in one account, at least where it fell off the cliff and they were in a hot spot and the other ones were pissed. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that night they were bombarding, the shed with rocks and stuff and scaring the hell out of them. And um, the next day they came up footprints everywhere. It's like, did you can't believe we went through that. And I think that they made a commitment not to tell anybody for a while or they, there's uh, a ranger came up. I'm dusty on this man. I'm sorry, but no. it, it, it's a great, it's a, one of the only uh, attacks of where you have a violent attack by these creatures on humans, right? Yep. And um, the other one one that I, comes to mind is 1977 in Hollis, New Hampshire, was it? Gerald Gerald, so Gerald St. Louis, um, where he's at, he's sleeping out the night before a flea market, and he's in a pickup, from what I understand, it's a pickup with a camper. It's not a camper. And I guess some creature peeps in and starts rocking his camper back and forth. Um, you know, a violent, aggressive action, and uh, the next day it makes it makes the news. And and there was uh, in New Hampshire in the in the mid seventies to late seventies, there was a lot of Bigfoot activity that made the newspapers. I still think it's a very active area, especially up north. Agreed. Um, um, there was. I'll tell you one story. I was traveling with the Harlem Rockets. You get down. Come on, Harlem Rockets is a comedy basketball team. I've um, I'm in. I I'm, I wasn't the basketball Hall of Fame my photo was for a long time, for at least 10 years, because I had worked with the Harlem Rockets, the Harlem Wizards, the Harlem Globetrotters, the Harlem Hoopsters, the Court Jesters, the Hollywood Hotshot, all those comedy basketball. And I worked with uh, the Harlem Magicians with Marcus Haynes. And oh, wow. I was very, very lucky. So um, the, they're doing some comedy basketball Hall of Fame. And and the guy who said, called me up last year, said, I'm, you're going in first ballot as the first announcer. Whoa, okay. That's amazing. Um, but traveling with them, um, we went through, I remember driving through West Virginia and the, and and uh, these guys saying, John, what's this junk piles doing out there? And I said, no, that's a neighborhood. Those are houses <laughs> in, in, you know, in, in <laughs> Appalachia. And, um, and I remember in North Carolina, out towards Boone, North Carolina, talking with the guy because I asked, you know, I was in the heat of the paranormal. And he had Bigfoot encounters. No, uh, Roy Saucier, you got to talk to him. Roy, come on down here. And anyways, he tells me about, oh, there's one out, out back in our woods near our house. He was just a matter of fact. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was like excited to tell somebody who believed him. Right. And he said, you probably don't believe us. I said, I, no, I believe you. That's why I'm talking to you, man. But th then going back to New Hampshire. So we're with the Harlem Rockets. We're in northern New Hampshire, a place called Pittsburgh. Okay. And it's a Got, got snowmobile tracks, right, in the winter. And we were there um, right at the Canadian border. And the guy basically told me this story, that he's out snowmobiling with his wife. And um, he goes out ahead of, her, uh, ahead of her, right, you know, as fast as he can with the lights on. And um, he's waiting, and she doesn't show up. So he doubles back, and she says, you won't believe what just happened, my 
I was going along and my headlight hit, it looked like this furry creature and it had glowing green eyes. And then my snowmobile went dead. And he checked out there and there was huge footprints. Whoa. I mean, that's the extent of the story, but he, I, I didn't have any explanation for it. Just trust your wife. What she said was true. Yeah, you right. Know? And this, this is what happened. So it's just the mo when you least expect, that's when it happens. Right. And, and again, I think it's certain people. Um, you know, we're good. So I, I, real quick, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, uh, before I forget, so a little while ago, you were talking about the T, the Connecticut, hmm. Rhode Island, Massachusetts T. Um, that's the area that I investigate every weekend. And really? Yes, it is. Um, the Arcadia Management Area in Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, Patchog State Forest here. Yeah. Um, Natchog once in a while. Um, what about Douglas? I've, Douglas yeah, Forest. And I've I've gotten three different sets of footprints in the last um, just eight months alone. 15 inch, 14 inch, and 11 inch. So I've been an advocate for close to 30 years for that area, telling people there's something to it. There was a roadrunner siding off 16, I think was the main thoroughfare on the other side. But you're, it, 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 just the whole habitat. It, oh, it's perfect. It, 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 isn't it? I mean, to me, perfect. I went through that. And you just, wow, spooky. Like, definitely something could be here undetected. A family could live here. There's water sources. There's berries. There's there's all sorts of wild animals. There's tons uh, of deer. There's there's fish. There's a small animal. There's, yeah, berries. There's all kinds of... I mean, it's the perfect habitat for something to live. And it's and it, it's not in an area that's very, um, excuse me, heavily populated, right? Um, that area of Patchog or um, uh, even the Natchog Forest, the Arcadia Management Area, is such a heavily forested area. And the houses are pretty sparse. They're set, you know, far apart or you know, there's lots of land surrounding them all. So there's not a ton of neighbors. Yep. Um, there's not a lot of um, stores and stuff there. So, I mean, it's, it's the perfect area. Um, that's where that patty was. Remember the girl on the horse? That's where she lived in that area. You know what's funny? You said that. You told that story. And I was – somebody came to me uh, two or three months ago with a story that's very, very similar in a very – in an cl area close by there. It was right off of Route 49 in Plainfield, Connecticut. And the Worcester – Providence Worcester Railroad tracks run right behind or right next to their house. And they have a whole big plot of land and on the land they have a small farm and that farm butts up to the state forest. Um, so you have the railroad tracks and you have the state forest were all right behind their house. Well, what was happening was the same thing. Chickens started going missing from a pen that you would need to have opposable thumbs to get into. Then they started finding footprint tracks. One night, the daughter went outside at like 12 or 1 in the morning to go smoke a doob. And because she couldn't sleep, she goes on the back porch and she said she, uh, the the uh, motion light came on when she went outside and the motion light is big enough and bright enough that it hit this thing down at the coop. And all she saw was the silhouette. She could even see the hairs like the, the, the individual hairs and the eyes lit up this red color. And she said, it, I mean, it's, it's head snapped, looked at her, let out this growl. And it walked off with at least one chicken under its arm. She went out the next morning and found three tracks, three deep impressions in the backyard that were all 16 or 17 inches long. I believe that. I mean, that's, it's, um, I wonder if that's the same, but mine was so many years ago when I investigated. Yeah, this was but this year. Okay. So these things though, as you know, they live in the area and you got to live with them. And if they see, okay. Um, you leave some food out. Like there was one in eastern Ohio. This guy, they was feeding one. He was leaving peanut butter out and apples and the thing was, and he had you know his track cams, um, outdoor jungle cams, right? The forest cams. And he caught something a half silhouette. The camera showed him like this ultraviolet, and all of a sudden half a head comes into the video like that, like this. <laughs> pretty creepy. His Amazing. Name was Jamie something in east liverpool ohio but it's all these families that are interacting with these creatures or these families of creatures and it's like hey dude and the, the creature saying let me live my peace you live your peace and we all get along you know mm -hmm. um 
did you ever see that documentary on the guy? Was he in Missouri? Or basically he was feeding deer and he was finding deer that were killed. And he asked the creature to let telepathically to just move down the road 10 miles. And it did. Did you ever hear about that? No. Was, I, saw, I saw it on YouTube. Some guy, it was a great documentary, living in this area where he was having an encounter with Bigfoot. And he knew how to feed the deer in his land. And the deer would come out of the woods and he'd feed them. But he kept finding dead deer. It's like snapped in half. Supernatural, man. Yeah. I mean, just... <laughs> <laughs> not a hunter. And he said to, 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 he sat on his back porch several nights and just said, Hey dude, I'm not here to just move on. Please move down. And it did that. The phenomena went away down, moved down. So let's go circle back to, to what they are. And then the lights in the sky with them. So uh, Stan Gordon um, spoke at my conference back 16, 17 years ago about the Westmoreland County. Stan is the one who brought the Kecksburg incident, the downed UFO, yeah. or the acorn-shaped object. Was it a Russian satellite? Was it a UFO? Or did nothing happen? Those are the three schools of thought in Kecksburg when I went out there. But he was the one that brought that. He was a little kid. He heard on the radio. I think he was at Ground Zero, and he brought up all the evidence. So in that, that's part, of, I believe, of Westmoreland County. And there's a great Stan's books are awesome. He's a great investigator, impeccable. Um, his sources are excellent. Doesn't exaggerate. He's a just the facts type of guy, just like Don Keating. And he wrote about these lights were being seen, and then they're find, seeing these huge Bigfoot. I mean, one, like I said, a nine-footer or, or eight-footer looking into the window of a camper, like second floor, creepy. And then the things disappear, and the, the flap or the spate um, just went away as quickly as it began. But in 1973, it terrorized this county. So that begs the question. Um, this is going to piss off a lot of people, but... Um, I don't know what these things are. They manifest themselves as flesh and blood. But in the end, are they? And why do the footprints disappear? Yeah. You got to ask that question. Um, and why, in some cases, they're associated with electromagnetic uh, phenomena, electrostatic. Um, they can see from a long, long way away as if they're not even um, human. They're not even a primate or a mammal with their, their uncanny senses. So... Are, is it one of the are, are they like are, uh, uh, coming through a portal, a rip in the fabric of space and time? You know, Hunt for the Skinwalker, right? Colm Kelleher, I think it was chapter six or chapter eight. He talks about this ball of light down on the road they're looking at. And I believe in Skinwalker, all of that. Um, yeah. and, and he's looking at this portal and this Bigfoot creature crawls out of this ball of light. I went, Whoa. Yeah. So so the Bigfoot community has to, you can't summarily dismiss that, you guys. You gotta look at that. Okay. I'm sorry. But but look at look at Hunt for the Skinwalker, Colm Kelleher. It was NIDS, the National Institute of Discovery Science, legit scientific operation. The show is great. They're still seeing stuff out there. But that connection, Stan Gordon, what he had, there's been other various uh Betty Hill mentioned even Bigfoot in some of her signings. Um, and she's she in I did the final interview with her. It was a shitty interview. I didn't even have questions prepared. Um, but she inferred to me after the cameras went off that those creatures were not of this earth. So I I just tell people out there, you cannot just say flesh and blood just yet. No, the question's you, can't still say, out. you can't say it's anything just yet. You, I mean, until, and I don't even think that one body would be enough. I think that you would have to have many different bodies because I, I, I truly believe that there could be multiple different types of these things even out there, um, depending on where you are geographically, subspecies and whatnot. Um, there may be ones that are supernatural. There may be ones that are just f fully flesh and blood. I don't know. That's the whole thing, right, is we don't know. Um, but there's a lot of stuff going on there, just just a lot. Yeah, and, 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 and you're talking about the color. Like Don Keating was seeing a white Bigfoot, and he got yeah. a video in eastern Ohio. What? Is it an albino? Is it, I mean, obviously uh, the, the creatures seen in the mountainous regions of Tibet and the Himalayas are, are white in color. But it's, it's this creature, it's, it's, it does have some supernatural capacity or, or stuff that we can't understand. And that's so quick. And there's yeah, been stories where, where you look at them and all of a sudden they're over there. It's a blur. And then, yeah. And then bounding up a hill, right? 
with the, with the edge of gravity. Like, and I think Todd Stanley was talking about that. Just, you, just did you see that video that Stanley the did? The one running with, up the hill. Yeah. 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 Whoa. See, that's why that can't be a hoax, dude. And, who, and who not only that, that the, he he did the the other video that that um where he did the size comparison of himself in that thing, and that that whatever that was was over ten feet tall. Yep. So it just it's just, it, so you got a guy in a costume and out in the bush like what, what, two hundred miles running faster than any Olympic runner ever has straight yeah. up a forty five yeah. degree yeah yeah slope. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a size of Shaquille O'Neal or, or you know, uh, uh, Georgie Mur Murazan in the NBA. You know, uh, <laughs> George who does, Murazan. Yeah, yeah, you know, he does those things or <laughs> takes things off. So I'm just saying, it, it's just, it, it's that's even more preposterous than yeah. to say that this is something uh, that we're not familiar with. And and moreover, I think that there are, um, um, uh, in Anita's saying there are different Sasquatch, I believe. I also think some beings show up here pretending to be Sasquatch. Ooh, oh, Sasquatch sure do seem to have some pretty cool abilities. Ooh, I also think some beings show up here pretending to be Sasquatch. Ooh, unpack that. Yeah. That, did they come from the saucers, right? Right. Oh, whoa. And, and are they, or are they mules or workers, right? Right. Um, uh, for, for the I call them the space bugs, right? So it's it's wow because the space bugs couldn't with their spindly did fingers and their bulbous head, and, and and they're just you know they're they're so thin. But maybe these creatures are working on their behalf, or they're they somehow I don't know. You can go way down the rabbit hole, dude, just like in the beginning of your show on that. <laughs> Let me let me ask you a question from uh, one of my buddies here. He was just on the show a couple of days ago. Um, it, Kaiju Ninja, his name is Tristan. Um, he he actually investigates a place called Bumping Lake um, out in the Pacific Northwest, um, and he has got some incredible, incredible evidence. Uh, he's going to come back on the show in in like a week or two because we didn't even unpack half of what he had to show and listen to. Um, so he's got some amazing stuff, but he wants to know, um, what do you think about Dog Man? Okay. First of all, Tristan, right? Um, there, he sounds like a guy that just, there are people, I, I could go in the same area and not find what he finds for whatever reason. Yeah. But he's, he has the ability to, he's a tracker, right? He knows how to find the evidence. He's Alex on it, like man. That. Yeah, exactly. He's got an ability, right? So the, the almost as if the phenomena wants him to find it. Right to, to disclose yeah. itself. So now, dog man. Okay, so I'm, I've been. <laughs> I'm old school, dude. Right, dog man is is was that the babies in the the baby bigfoots in the trees? I'm sorry. What is what what the fuck is dog man? So dog man is basically like a werewolf. Like this has become a big thing over the last few years, especially. Um, it's there's been more and more reports. There's a, a pretty famous one by a gentleman. Um, from Tennessee named Martin Groves, who's a former police officer down there. Um, him and his friend partner uh, were down there hunting at one point in the LBL land between the lakes, and, which is a really friggin' weird area. It's all, it's very similar to the Bridgewater triangle in that there's all these things, the balls of light, there's cult activity, there's Bigfoot sightings, alien sightings, all this shit. Um, vortex. Yeah, it's a vortex. There's so much energy there. And so he was down there with his friend hunting, and um, they had a sighting of these things, these dog men, and at the same time, two Sasquatch. So there was dog men and Sasquatch together in this area. And this is a gentleman, excuse me, who for all purposes is a former police officer, not just a police officer, but was voted as part of the fraternal order of police officers. He's a very respected man in his community um, and, and, you know, in the police department for what that's worth. Um, mm. At least mm. we know that he's a, a, somebody who's been trained in observation, right? So he, he's, he's got a pretty good grasp on what he's seeing. And um, so these reports are getting uh, more and more common. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's a question that comes up a lot now. Mm. Um, you know, th uh, about 10, 15 years ago, Mothman, right? They were getting these photos of this winged, creature like flying off bridges back in ufo lore back in the south you had the flatwoods monster the hopkinsville goblins are you familiar with that one with oh it's one of my favorite things ever yeah yeah and then the Falkville tin man 1973 jeff something is his first it's amazing i remember the Falkville 
F A L K V I L L E, Falkville, Alabama. This dude, cop, comes up named Jeff. I forget. Comes up. His headlights hit this being that looks like it's covered in tin foil. You know, back then, shoot and then ask questions later or dump the body, right? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't mess with cops back in the day there. They'll, they'll check in the river. So um, that went away. But the dog man, back to, was it, who was it that just asked that question? Was that an alien? It was Tristan, Kaiju Ninja. No, but before, the, the, the young lady that asked the question about did they manifest themselves as something else. Oh, that was, um, hold on, let me go back real quick. Anita, Anita. Anita. Um, what she was saying, do they manifest themselves? Is that like the new creature? Because when you first said dog, man, I, I instantly thought about the, the Texas blue dogs in the 90s and early part of the century. People are finding these weird bald dogs with no hair. Have you heard about this? And fangs and this just creepy looking thing. So I'm wondering, back to what Anita said, is this like the next gen creature? That they well, these things walk upright. Okay. So they walk dog. upright. They have like a the most of the reports. This is what this is what uh, I I'm still learning about them because I didn't believe in them for a very like since I I didn't believe in them period until just about this last year when I started talking to um, a couple of my good buddies who are from this community and one of them who I I would literally stake my life on uh, when he explained what he saw to me it was very difficult for me to to put it off as just you know conjecture or lies or you know crazy shit and yeah. and it, but they the, the description is a lot of times is um large like a sasquatch but german shepherd type head long elongated snout pointy ears um look looking like a werewolf uh, some of them are very muscular some have even the weird dog legs where they're kind of bent backwards um others are more of the other type two variety where they have sasquatch builds regular legs um, big upper bodies and then the dog type head um, without those weird kind of backward bending legs. But yeah, strange stuff, man. So, so you sound like a good judge of character up until you had me on your show. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but it, you, you can tell if there's like this, like this guy, Jason, right? Who said he saw the Bigfoot. He sees balls, the lights, sea moss. He sees everything. It's like, yeah, yeah you're full of it, dude. You know? Yeah, and um, I've heard of these ghost researchers. Oh, I saw balls of light. I saw a Bigfoot in one night. It's like shut up. Yeah. So you know when these people, this is the only anomalous event that they have in their lives, um, and they're being and they're consistent with the retelling, consistent, consistent that there's something, to, and you can see that they're visibly moved. Their soul, they've been shaken to the core of their being. Oh yeah, like what is, and they're coming to terms with this. Yeah, with the reality not, of what happened. And it's it's and I, I like to tell those people it happened for a reason. It's not really random, and that that if these are associated with the space bugs, but it, UFOs, I believe, are deliberate. Mm. And I believe if you see a, a Sasquatch, or if you see one, it's deliberate. It wanted you to encounter it, right? Um, it's just here I am. Keep me in the news. I'm around or I'm around here. Don't come any closer. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause who's, who's going to chase a Sasquatch. If you see one, you're going the opposite way. You're out of here. Yeah, I don't yeah. care who you are. It's just, okay, dude, I get it. I'm on. Cause they, they somehow transmit, um, this thought of fear, like, like GTFO, get out of here. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and you do. Okay. You feel, so, uh, they defend their, their, their territorial pissings. Right. And, and you know that the family, there's young ones behind that, right? Yeah, there's never just one. If there's one, there's more. And for all intents and purposes, if you encounter one of these things, you're encountering it in the woods, where the woods anyway, they're creepy, they're remote. Um, and they're monsters. They're big, hairy, giant monsters. I mean, who the hell in their right mind is going to run towards that thing? Uh, this is why I, I love that argument. Well, why is there not better pictures? Why, why isn't the person who just saw it stay there or go closer to it? Let me tell you something. If you're the guy or girl in the woods and you see a seven to ten foot tall, thousand pound, giant hair covered bipedal monster, you're not going to hang around. You're going to get the run. fuck out of there. Yeah, <laughs> yep. run, run. Yep. Well, yep, well, for sure. It's just so the people, like, like I said, don't engage those people unless they cite case by case and they can dispute the thousands of cases and you can yeah. do it like that. That idiot, uh, Joe Nickel, Nickel, back in my day, he was the skeptic, skeptical. And this other guy, I forget his name. Oh, I see his face, Michael Shermer, right? 
they just they pull excuses out of there. They twist the facts and they make mm-hmm. up their own facts. And it's like, dude, you, you know, I think Michael Shermer finally came around because he had a UFO encounter or religious experience. But it's it's supernatural. It's the unexplained. It, it, it's these things have been happening forever. We don't we don't have our arms around what goes on in this planet, on this planet, beneath this planet, or in the oceans of this planet, right? Mm-hmm. So, so, um, but to think that, that here's my theory, can we, can we take a left turn to, to UFOs? Shut up, Jakers. <laughs> right, it's Jakers, come here. Um, my theory is the modern UFO era begins, what's up, buddy? Begins in 1947, right? Um, they're there's sightings in June. It begins actually June 24th, 1947. Kenneth Arnold, right? He sees this formation of discs over uh, Mount Rainier. What was the Cascades? Is that the right? Anyway, and he describes them to the reporter as they looked like saucers skipping across water or something to that effect. They're coin flying saucers. This is June 24th. Dan Wilmot, July 2nd, 1947, in, in Roswell, sees, sees uh, a craft fly through the sky. There's, they show up everywhere, right? And so it's 1947, July, and that is two years almost to the day of the nuclear bomb being tested in Alamogordo, New Mexico, Trinity site. So what if it took two years? Uh, there are three things that attracted them. Radio signals. Um, the rocket engine, we could get off the mud ball and nuclear weapons. But what if it took two years for whatever this blast was to get out into outer space and maybe some scouts or sentries picked it up? What the hell's that? And then zoomed into Earth. Who knows, right? Or did it go at the speed of light? My theory is, here's my theory. Jack Benny, what do you want, dude? Jack Benny had the first major broadcast, I believe it was December of 1933, where he broadcast his radio show live simultaneously on something like 110 radio stations. <laughs> is the biggest simultaneous radio signal ever broadcast. And Jeff Rents, who's a great, Rents.com, R-E-N-S-E.com, great website good friend um he said that jack benny has probably that signal's pa- probably passed hundreds of stars by now mm. yeah so so rochester that's, that's the third peer the, the, <laughs> meldar meldar he's talking to us a, a servant and, and and then and then and then they come all the way across the galaxy and they crash into the side of a mountain near the only nuclear base i call bullshit on that now what i do think happened is there was definitely a debris field and when i first went to roswell in 1995 Four, five. I um, I went out. I saw this huge BLM Bureau of Land Management map, an X, and I said, "Take me there." Oh, that's the debris field. And the dudes, and Kevin D. Randall was there at that time. Don Schmidt, who were the Roswell researchers. I talked to all of the um, original witnesses. I think it was um, the guy Dennis Balthaser. Or either way, we went out there, and we found some. He went out with a medical detector, and he found some little metallic. Uh, pieces. And I had that for years, and then I lost a lot of stuff in the fire, so it's gone somewhere. I never found it. But um, I'm thinking that the debris happened, right? And then, moreover, if you look at the original story of Roswell um, from the original book that was released by um, um, Charles Berlitz and uh, what's the other guy? In 1980, the first... That's the most closest to the event. That's just after Jesse Marcel had come back out and said that he handled strange debris. His son, who never wavered, said there was this you know, debris that was on his kitchen table. You can ball up and straighten itself out. So there was debris there, and there was an incident with some sort of craft, whether it did a touch and go. But the story was uh, there were three that it crashed into the side of a mountain. They proved that that guy, Jim Ragsdale, was full of shit lying. Uh, Stan Friedman had a collision of two flying saucers. Um, uh, nothing there. So I think there was an incident, but what I was looking at was the story in the plains of San Augustine in Roswell, which was near Socorro in a place called Old Horse Springs. And um, Barney Barnett, who was a land surveyor, came forward in June of 1947 with a story that he had seen a downcraft and that's where the story evolves where uh some archaeologists and some students came over the hill then the military comes storming in you shut up don't you say we're get out of here blah, blah, blah. and they they cordon off the area so there's a bunch of it's time to quit roswell okay 
We had the government on the ropes. It's time to quit Roswell. Whether they recovered alien beings, were there three fingers, four fingers, five fingers, one dead, two dead, three, we don't know. And everybody backdated themselves into the story. So I kind of walked away and went, nah, forget it, in mm -hmm. 1997. There are too many people lying. But <clears throat> if you look at the original articles, Mac Brazel found that debris in mid-June before, I think he found that debris before Kenneth Arnold. Do you follow? They always say it went down on July 4th, 1947. No, it didn't. He found debris, and then the other story was just, and even, you know, uh, Kevin Randall's still, Don um, Schmidt and Tom Carey are still on it, and they do a lot of good work. Um, but I just think there's something to it. But as Kevin D. Randall said, we still don't have the aliens from mm -hmm. Roswell. So, um, and it was at the, the 507th bomb group in uh, um, in Roswell. That's where the first nuclear wing was, a bunch of B-29s. Of course, modern day, you have Holloman Air Force Base out there, South Fighters. You have um, the White Sands uh, Proving Grounds, right, where we um, fire off missiles. And there's a lot of uh, uh, staff, which is high energy, I think, high energy laser strategic air force where they they're using lasers and this is back in the 90s dude so imagine what they have now so yeah right it, it, my, my point is we've attracted them here and they're going to like Malmstrom air force base and the missile silos you've heard about that oh, going yeah. in nuclear aircraft carriers everything's strategic they're around there for a reason and they're seen for a reason um, and, and I just think that everything they do is deliberate. Um, they're still there and they could annihilate us if they wanted to, but they've chosen not to. And then this is what I believe in. I believe in the close encounters of the first kind, right? Seeing it second kind, I think leaves an impression close encounters of the third kind. You see occupants and close encounters of the fourth kind where you, you, you're abducted. And then there's even close encounters of the fifth kind where, 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 uh, alien hybrids. And so when I started studying this in the 90s, those hybrids can be in their 20s now. Yeah, crazy shit, man. It is. It's crazy wild. Shit. And, you know, I mean, all these abductees, they're not lying. Just like people that see they and they're getting probed sexually. They're ove. Women are having ove taken out. Men are taking, having their sperm taken out. So it's um, it's a wild story. And I don't think they just went away. I think, yeah, humans, you're stupider than we thought you were. <laughs> yeah, but then the other the, the spiritual side of it is that they that somehow us you me everybody watching this we have the god particle that is we have emotion we have the soul because these these things are like robots these these grays they don't have emotion they don't even eat for christ's sakes right and um they're all the same there's no uniqueness to them there's you know, here i think 109 billion people have ever walked on this earth and 109 billion people all unique right and to them, they're all the same. They're cookie cutter. They're the same. They think the same thoughts. <clears throat> so we've got way down the rabbit hole to the point we can't get out here. But it's just, it's it's an amazing universe. Um, I think that they're going to up their game. Um, we're, we're this close to nuclear war, dude. We're this mm -hmm. close, okay? I mean, um, the, the New World Order, and I call them the gay lords, right? In my opinion, they're wealthy, white, male pedophiles. There, said it. Um, but they want nuclear war, okay? And have you ever seen Zelensky's da dances, by the way, in high heels? Oh, yeah. he's a dad. Okay, he's a dandy. Okay, so it's all a lie, as we know. And um, there are bio labs over there. Um, Russia, is, they're waiting for the ground to harden, dude. This is what worries me. The mud there is deep mired in mud but once that ground hardens i mean um the battle of kursk took place in ukraine the greatest tank battle ever in world war ii but once that ground hardens the russians are going to move from the north to south they're going to move from the north east to the southwest and then ukraine all their old men and women that they've plucked off the street right in their brand new shiny equipment that nobody knows how to use they're going to try to assault so it's like uh, the democrats will fight uh the russians to the last dead ukrainian <laughs> so it, it, it's it's we're, we're on the break of nuclear war and i'm expecting now that you should see more ufo sightings because the space bugs know it's just about to get real okay so i, I agree I, with that i mean there's something to this right it, you, you you talked about the missile silos a little bit and how they went and shut down these missile yep. silos how they're seen around nuclear power plants how they're seen are these nuclear carriers and all this stuff um uh, you know, the, the, I wonder if there's if if they're they have some kind of um, if there's some kind of if they're invested in this planet in some way, whether it's just because of us 
They want a, something from us to continue this maybe hybrid program that they got going on uh, or whatever it is. I, I have no idea, but um, I don't know what would continue having them come back here for these things and to interject themselves in things like that, where they would shut down a, a nuclear silo just to be like, hey, look, um, we can shut this down. Maybe you guys shouldn't mess around with this stuff. Um, yeah, there's something to be said for that. Absolutely. I think they're intuitive. Maybe there were some uh, you We've had some... Uh, what four or five near misses of doomsday where a bad tape was in there or a misidentification on the Russian side or the American side where they almost launched right. Right. Yep. But full, full defense conditions and just launched in each other. And uh, we've avoided that maybe in, I think that was 1967 in Malmstrom. They said, Hey, this, this thing's about to go off and think about this, man, that a, a nuclear weapon has not gone off in anger since 1947. Right. So you're talking 76 years. I did the math without counting. That's a, it's bizarre. Right. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the hand of the creator. So back to what you said, what are, are we a mining colony here for them? And, and did they, did they, there's no missing link. Did we go from the ape um, and all of a sudden become this hairless, bipedal creature that talks and builds villages and plants and and now today we post on our devices right and we talk on our cell phone you know and then we're gonna evolve into like this it, well, just look at how fast technology's evolved in the last 20 years i mean it's 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 incredible how fast it's, it's evolved um it's just nuts well, well, look at AI is even more terrifying. Oh, that scares no, no, me, man. No, what I said is, is, is AI will assume the identity of its creators. That means that it, artificial intelligence hates you and me due to our complexion, number one, due to our sexuality, number two, due to our religious beliefs. But it, AI right now is, is, was developed by, let's face it, gay, uh, white, communist liars, right? So that's what AI is right now, and that's why Musk is saying we got to – create a counter AI, but that's the way I look at life. They're coming for us. The robots are coming for you and me, dude. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I'm sure. And, and, and all of this has just exploded right under our noses while we slept, while we posted right in the last six months, AI has exploded. But AI now, it's writing songs, it's writing newspaper articles. They can make you and me say stuff that we never said. Uh, you probably saw that uh, uh, Biden thing the other day where the man said <laughs> It, 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 it's it's scary. So it, it's to the point now that um, uh, the computers uh, are going to outwit man. And what they will do is it'll assume arrogance and hubris and try to destroy human beings because this whole thing in climate change, right? Uh, that we're destroying the planet. We are destroying the planet, but the whole thing of you're going to die, they've been saying that since 1973, uh, yeah. that, that, you know, I'm supposed to be in a waist deep water now, but the people that are saying climate change are the people with six jets, right? They fly to Davos and, and to, to decide we're not smart enough. They're going to make the decisions on our behalf. Right. But it, 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 it's in, in what if that computer glitch, something happens to uh, set off a nuclear device, right? And then, yeah. Even India, Pakistan, they both, uh, you have one. No, you have one. Tehran was saying we're going to level Tel Aviv and Haifa in Israel, right? In Israel, you know them, they have the dead man switch, right? Um, they'll just start lobbing. So it's, and then the North, North Korea, that madman. Um, oh, God. Yeah. And then we want a, a war with China over Taiwan. And um, Taiwan has semiconductors, right? But it's, uh, it's another a cesspool of a country. I hate to say in terms of the pollution, there's no regulations, but I think that, that the Chinese would rather appropriate it than fight for it. You follow like there's enough spies there where they can just quarantine it and make it their own and absorb it. Um, but that we are just dude, America. My, my father was intelligence, right? He worked um, with defense intelligence agency and I'm the son of a spy and a grandson of a spy. And I, and I still have uh, people that I do speak with, from time to time in, in, in McLean uh, uh, in, in the Virginia area. But uh, they always thought that the eagle, America, would align with the bear, Russia, to fight the dragon, China. Uh, or the eagle would unite with the dragon to fight the bear. They never saw the dragon and the bear get together to fight the eagle. We're fucked. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's, I just talked it's, to a friend of mine not too long ago who's a, um, a former uh, Navy SEAL. And um, worked on a bunch of, like, you know, classified stuff over the years. He was in the Balkans and all kinds of shit. He's a really smart guy. And, you know, he's the real deal. And he said to me, he was like, I'll tell you right now, 
He said, if something drastic isn't done in the next uh, couple of years, within 10 years, China will be the world's superpower. He said, and if Russia and China align with each other, we're in deep shit. And, he's, well, and he, he doesn't believe that it's going to be a nuclear war. He believes that this next that the next war will be different. He thinks that it'll be fought more economically, that they'll try to, to completely destroy our economy before they lob bombs at us. Yep, yep, ag agreed. And uh, if you look at it, right, that's where we are. Welcome. Yeah, that's where we are. I mean, I, we're, we're in the final weeks of what I call the before times, where there was abundance on demand, right? When I talked about procure and eat, uh, the product's going to go away, man. We're going to see some bare shelves, gas lines, uh, this whole bullshit about EVs and gas trucks, um, in the rare earth metals, China has cornered the market on 98% of the rare earths. They're in Africa building superstructures and they, they literally run all the ports. We've already lost, okay? And um, what, what do they want in America, right? What do they want? They want our soil, our farms. The, the breadbasket of Europe was Ukraine. I think 40% of all the farms are mined with landmines. That'll take decades to remove, okay? Yeah. So what used to, and like they haven't planted in, two, in, in a year, over a year. Um, so the crop isn't coming out of there. Like all that wheat that was being exported was wheat that was grown prior to February of 2022. Mm -hmm. So my thought is that China, and, and I'm going to say this, I don't care, I've said a lot of shit. Uh, China will invade the United States. States at one time. They'll invade in the West Coast. And I learned that one day I was baked playing Risk. And I said, I can attack the United States from China. They're going to harass the Pacific, probably in big container ships. There's a guy called Jeff Nyquist, N-Y-Q-U-I-S-T, Jeff. Look up his shit on Rumble. He'll give you the, the lowdown. But they're going to have to put boots on the ground. And I think that they're going to use the blue-balled uh, 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 incel North Korean army to do the work, they're brainwashed. They're, the, the Chinese soldiers, they, that's why they know the taste of the good life, Western life. The North Korean soldiers don't. They're, they're brainwashed, drugged up. Um, I just think that China will invade the United States uh, very soon, maybe before 2024, because they don't want uh, that guy, TDS, Donald Trump, hurt me. Oh, Donald Trump, hurt me. Um, they don't want him back in power because he's going he's gonna to swing a mace. You know, He's going to be yeah. thrown... He's going to be throwing haymakers. So um, we are at the precipice right now. Um, Russia's not going to invade the United States. Putin, he's staying right at the end of our jab, right? Right? Just in, with a spark in his face. Um, and he's, and you put sanctions. Now there's no more petrodollar. It's a yuan dollar. Um, he's got all the resources, the natural gas. Biden blew up Nord Stream, right? Um, he's just done so many things to, to bring on World War III, and I just think it's a it's an act of God, and, and we're lucky that that um, uh, Putin and 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 uh, what's the guy's name? Yi? No shit, the Chinese guy, their leader. Oh yeah, uh, um, uh, Xi. 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 Yeah, that they 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 see they're looking downrange, they're looking long term. Okay, yeah. and they know that everything coming out of the, the United States government is just a lie. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I know it's a lie. It's, yeah. I don't, you know, if you don't watch the news, I turned off the news four years ago. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that's happened to me is I get rained on because I don't know the weather. Mm -hmm. And I could argue, <laughs> I could argue even the weather's fake news because I never get it right. So it's, it's, we are, uh, the, the halcyon days of American imperialism, we're going to decide who your leader is. It's over. And like they're trying to overthrow, they, 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 they jinxed the election in Brazil uh, with, Bolsonaro, and now they're doing it in Paraguay, and um, China's going to say, enough of your shit, you know, and Putin says, if you poke me in the eye one more time, one more time, and if NATO, um, you know, we've, we've given all this money to Ukraine and weaponry, have you heard of one dollar going to humanitarian aid of the five million refugees, food, water, shelter? No. What it is, is they're sending money to Ukraine, um, the cokehead is laundering it, sending it back to the Democratic Party, like that SBF, FTX, GFY, SBF. <laughs> yeah, yeah, GFY, you little curly haired boyfriend. Um, but it's just, it's a, it's a laundry, and they just lie and they lie about their lies, then they deny their lies, and then they accuse you and I of their lies. And it's just up to here, man. You want to fight? Let's fight. Huh? Mm -hmm. Let's get behind our civil, uh, our stone walls. I'm, I, I'm, I know who my friends are, right? Yep. I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna. All, all my guys, friends, they, they own guns. They're responsible. They're not shooting up schools. They're fucking responsible. But you want to go? 
you know, you can click and run at me with your high heels, okay? Um, and we'll just slap the shit out of you. But we, we, we're up to here. We're done with you. If you want it, let's go. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. Um, I, I want to go back uh, a little bit. Um, Boy, we, we, we really strayed from Bigfoot, didn't we, dude? No, it's okay, man. It's okay. I didn't have you on the show just to talk Bigfoot. I wanted to talk, you know, all this stuff. Um, but I want to go back a, a little bit because um, you you mentioned uh, that you interviewed Betty Hill. Um, you said it was a shitty interview, but I don't believe that for a minute. Um, I, I'd like to know... Um, you know, your take on, on, on what they experienced and um, what it was like to sit down and speak with her. Um, that, that interview, first of all, was organized. It was in 1998 or 99 by Lauren Coleman. And I thank Lauren for that. Um, it, I, I found the video in 2009. I thought I lost it 10 years after it. I, I found it. That's why I call it the lost Betty Hill tape. And then 10 years later in 2019, I found a super VHS recording from a different angle. I forgot I had two cameras that day. So if you go online on YouTube and there's so many people have stolen it from me, it's the only video I've ever released that actually got some viewers. Um, and you'll see two different angles. So I went up there unprepared and um, just knew of the story. Um, I don't think I even had a, I had a computer that, and essentially the story is Betty and Barney Hill, biracial couple, couple, uh, uh, uh Barney was, um, African-American Betty was a good couple living in New Hampshire. I think they were living in Portsmouth at the time. Not sure. Anyways, they were coming from the white mountains down route three. They see a light, a star off in the distance. Um, the, it follows them. It goes by the old man on the mountain, uh, essentially Barney stops, and this all comes out when they're hypnotically regressed by Benjamin. I forget his name. It's not smart. I forget. But the, the, essentially, they, the, these alien beings, these greys walked up, took them by the hand, and Barney was terrified. No, but they couldn't. Then they walked up the ramp. They were probed and examined. Betty ended up losing a button on her dress and the dress had some radioactivity on it. There were some weird markings on the hood of their car, trace evidence. And it took a couple of years. They just, they, they just let it be. It's kind of like that Allagash incident of 1976. Are you familiar with that? We'll talk about that. No, in a second. no. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you about that one. Um, so it, and then they went and they had these weird recurring dreams. Okay. And finally they were hypnotically regressed. And this woman called Marjorie fish drew the star map because I think it was Betty. Remember, they showed them where they were from. And Marjorie Fish, M-A-R-J-O-R-I-E Fish. Um, you can see that online. It's a really complex star map. It's three-dimensional. And all these stories that you just can't be normal people and come up with a story, the sci-fi story, out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So they're called the first abductees and the first publicized abductees and of course they subjected themselves to scorn and ridicule barney would eventually pass away but betty held fast she that girl she held on to her story never wavered never changed her story um i feel that she was a seer that she could interact um she i she said she could see all you almost see ufos on demand but she was one of those interactor that she could go out to a field, a special place she had in New Hampshire, near high tension wires, and see lights. And she showed me pictures, Polaroids, and they look blurry, but there's something there. So yeah. I just, you know, what's her motivation to hoax all this? It's like she was looking. Do you believe me? There's nothing psychotic about it. She was, she was affected by this incident. It was a one-time incident with this abduction, and of course, um, move ahead to 1976, four friends, two brothers, two twin brothers, I think they are, and, uh, and friends are out in the Allagash. They're fishing. Uh, it's a week-long or two-week vacation. You know, take in what you take out, just a canoe. They're going to go out in the bush, camp, fish, live off the land. They had some, and I guess they, had, they, they lit this huge bonfire. So um, they could find themselves. They're going out night fishing. They the huge bonfire so they could go out and find their way back to their camp. So they're going out, and then the guy in the, behind the canoe looks behind him. He sees this bright light. Hey, boys, look at this. They look at this. The light comes at them. And what they did is they flashed their flashlight, like Morse code, SOS, and whatever it did. It pissed off the thing. They find themselves now paddling back to shore. 
okay? And they find just burnt embers of their bonfire. So, but they just lit that thing. So there's missing time, right? And um, they, they're hypnotically regressed. They all have the same story, brought on board this craft, um, um, probed, uh, had sperm samples taken, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, two of the guys really affected them mentally, but they all went to different hypnotists. And they all concurred that they were taken on board this craft. I mean, you just don't make that shit up. So uh, that, to me, was a classic abduction case. Um, you have the Pascagoula, Mississippi case of 1973. Charles Hickson and his buddy, I forget his name, they were abducted off a dock you know, in, in Mississippi. Just there's, there's countless abduction stories. So for, you to, for anybody to summarily dismiss them, you haven't read the evidence, dude. Mm -hmm. You haven't. And it starts with Betty. And her story, she was great. And the way she said she was cigarette after cigarette. And she'd talk in the, the her um, Salem Light 100 would just become one big ash, right? <laughs> and she'd talk to you. But it was just great. And then she had her head. And um, I just cut her off when she was getting to something really profound. And, and just being a rookie interviewer, I would cut her off because I was excited to be there. But it, it was an experience. And I believe Betty Hill. I believe that happened to her and Barney. And... Um, and it's and alien abduction is happening uh, uh, to people around the world. I, Bud Hopkins, I got to know him before he passed away, and Leslie Kane. But Bud was the foremost authority on alien abductions up until he passed, and he had some great stories um, of a family in Delfino, Kansas, that was abducted. A UN, the head of the UN, was abducted in New York City, 1989. A woman by the name of Linda. So, I just. I can't reject that at all. Oh, dude, no. I thought you were—I thought you were hitting a beer, and I'm saying I want one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but, but it—it's—it's. It, it's, I can't explain it, but I acknowledge it. And that's the same with Bigfoot. I can't explain. I acknowledge it. There's something to it. And if anybody says there's no, or laugh at me, yeah, laugh. I believe in God. <laughs> I believe in the afterlife. I believe in saints, miracles. I believe in Bigfoot. There. Yeah. yeah, and you've studied that stuff too, which leads me to um, it, we've been doing this for two hours. Um, I'm not going to keep you on too long. I got to get going soon. Ma matter of fact, before we before we get to that point, though, um, there's so much more we can talk about. I know you're uh, probably a pretty busy guy, but um, if you're up for it, I'd love to have you back on um, sooner rather than later, so we could get yes. into some of the other stuff because this has been amazing. absolutely yeah. Okay, so definitely. we'll figure definitely. that out after yep. the show. But um, uh, I'm in, man. I want to talk about uh, you and me. You and me, we're friends, bro. Oh, absolutely! This is amazing. I'm, uh, this has been such a fun time for me. I have no idea. Um, I want to talk about we because we touched on it before the show, and um, you just spoke about being a believer in God and all. So let's yeah. talk about the end times. Uh, this is something that I talk about a little bit. I am not a, a typical Christian Catholic boy. Like I don't, I don't go to church. Um, I was raised Irish Catholic. Um, you know, half my family's Portuguese, half my family's Irish. Uh, they're all Catholics, uh, but believed in God, feared God. Um, uh, my grandmother had premonitions in her dreams uh, about things that happened and, and believed in the prophecies. And, and I remember as a child hearing about the prophecies in the Bible. Uh, my mom would watch the shows on them all the time. And, and um, they scared the shit out of me, to be completely honest with you. Um, it, it, it the but I, I said this a couple years ago. I said, you know, if it's real, if if the end times are real, if all this stuff is real, we're in it now. Yep. Uh, there's just too much going on that points to all of these prophecies and things that, that have been talked about in the Bible to for me to not believe anymore. I have to believe. Right. Um, it, the more I read the Bible, the more true it is. And I, I'm sorry, folks, that we're going off track here. But um, you know, the one thing I want to leave you with tonight, my equation ends in God. However we got there, I'm still figuring out the variable variables of the equation. We're all lines of code within the great algorithm, right? Um, it's light and dark, the universe, positive, negative, good and evil. Okay, so so I've looked at prophecy, um, studied Marian apparitions. So you got to look this up, Fatima Garbandal. Oh, I know that very well. And, and um, um, 
as a Catholic, I go to church every day. I take communion every day. It's rare when I don't. I go to confession twice a week. Then I sin like a son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> but 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 it's it's. I'm trying to make myself. I'm trying. I'm working on my 401k for salvation. The odds are I'm not going to make it to heaven. It's you know rare. Only a small amount make it to heaven. But I believe in purgatory, and I just want to land near, near the door of purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, but with, with this, um, I've studied Marian apparitions in 1992, Fatima prophecy written by Ray Stanford. He was talking about there would be a purge in the church. Priests would be run out of the church, uh, for, for taking souls. And I'm thinking, what, what are they talking about? Now we know they were diddlers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and pushed out of the church. Um, the devil, the, the third Fatima prophecy says that the devil is going to get a hold of the Vatican. I think he's in there. You know, they're, they're going to ban. And remember you heard this here. And I predicted this a couple of years ago. In Germany, those clowns, they banned exorcisms. They want to leave the back door, the back screen door open for the devil. But you watch this pope. Uh, he's being, he's old now and fragile. So he's being bullied around by, by the Vatican gays. Um, and and he, he will be, um, he'll ban exorcism. You watch, it's just like the Latin mass. So good and evil. You have the devil and God, right? We'll pick one. Um, I, I pray to angels. I believe in angels. I think we all have a guardian angel. Think of the times you're driving, man. Like, oh, something moved you. You know, it all happens to all of us. You say little prayers to find something that happens. So I think um, the end times are here. If you look at Garabandal, Fatima Prophecy, Lords, there's talking about um, the, the, the warning followed by um, uh, the miracle and then the chastisement, right? And the warning is going to be something in the sky. And I believe it's going to be something solar. Uh, we're in solar cycle 25. Uh, solar cycle 24 was dormant, right? There were no sunspots, no solar flares for all intent and purpose. In solar 20, uh, cycle 23, the end of it was, so, I think the sun's going to wake up. You've been hearing about solar flares. Whenever I hear about solar flares, I freak out because um, if one hits the earth, bang, we go dark. Yeah. Okay, the night the satellites fell, mm -hmm. right? Um, it just cooks us. And it's like a, a huge global EMP, right? And I believe God could do, you know, God turned a grain of rice, turned universe, and then he rested. I think he did it in a day, not six days. But, um, yeah, right. He rested for six days. But So now I'm seeing the devil in the United States. God can no longer bless America. Okay, so we, we, we've got a, a, a president that lies. He's not a Catholic. Uh, although he pretends to be, he just wants to kill babies. He wants to maim children and, 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 and slice off their genitals. He wants men and women to be worshiped. Men who dresses women to be worshiped as God. That's just the devil, man. Sorry. That's Satan. And it's all happened in the last four years. We taken it. It's all part of the great reset with Klaus Schwab. Okay, have you heard of him? The mm -hmm. bald Nazi, Klaus Schwab, K L A U S S C H W A B. Look him up, New World Order, W F, W E F, the World Economic Forum. But they wanted to go to globalism, no more nationalism. They want a digital currency. They want us to be slaves. So I see the devil everywhere. And we're on the cusp of nuclear war. And we're in the, we're in the ninth inning, man. That's the way I look at it right now, um, unless a miracle happens. And you and me, we got to clean up our own backyard and be the best we possibly can to ourselves, to our family, to our friends and be truthful. But all these motherfuckers do is lie and they lie and they lie and they lie and they don't want the individual. They hate the family. Um, and now they want to take your children. I like to say that, that, that never be mommies want to make sure that other women never be mommies. And now they want to take your children. That's, that's all devil shit. I'm sorry. That's, that's satanic. It's demonic. It's we're there. And that's why I, my ass is in church every day, you know. Um, it's a scary thing, man. Um, this is not the world that, uh, and, and you know, obviously things change over time. Um, but you would expect that, um, that things would change for the better if we're growing as a society, as human beings. And this is spiritually, not, yeah, spiritually. That that. That should be the, the number one thing. And that's not what you're seeing here. Um, there's more division among us than ever. I mean, we, we, we couldn't be, we're fighting over things that, that are so absolutely ridiculous sometimes. I mean, you, you, uh, people's opinions now are enough to get you, you know, c canceled. Whereas before you had an opinion that differed with somebody, you, it was called being an adult and saying, okay, agree to disagree. No big deal. 
Now it's like if you have an opinion that doesn't line up with my opinion and you talk about it, well, forget it. You're done. You're over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, th th this this show is going to get taken down by YouTube, I guarantee. And oh, if somebody probably. if somebody comes knocking at my door, I get a fucking surprise for you. So um, it's just yeah, I got a couple too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it, it's just you know I'm not afraid of you. Nobody's coming to your door to take your guns. Who are they going to send? Who's dumb enough? In order to get one gun from one house, you'd have to send heavily armored sixteen men up there and then the guy across the street sees it he's going to hit you from behind so they're not going to come for your guns and that's what they want they're going to make they're going to make take put fear in you they're not going to get your guns okay no, the, the, a target gift card for an old squirt gun sure okay but it's just so that's where they failed and they failed with the fake pandemic and bill gates is behind this okay and they say there's another one coming um but but if you look at to me covid was bullshit it was influenza b okay and they got you to put that have another one here booster three booster four booster five. shit doesn't work do you get it yet they're putting poison in you and now you know these people are dying suddenly from climate change and if that's devil shit that's the mark of the beast and it's i'm sorry um bernie was talking about saint thomas Aquinas. yeah, yeah. um but um, it, it, it just, it's so evil. If we look, look at where we are now, we should be ashamed of ourselves, the United States. The, you, you, you put in a guy, you give him 81 million fake votes. I mean, they stopped the election in the middle of the night and they put in this buffoon. It's a third term for the other guy who was born in Nigeria. And now he's going back to Nigeria. Um, it's just, it's no longer an election. And now Dominion, his, Fox paid them off. So all elections are fixed moving forward. You know, you don't have a choice. I, I told them when I voted, I get a sticker. I voted, but they won't count it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and I can tell you this. I had to do mail-in um, ballots um, to go through that in my town. It took a while. You had to go up there with a mask on six feet, to get called in to get your ballot, walk out with a mask on, and then fill out the battle, mail it. And it, it, the process was you can't tell me that these lefties who are hiding behind their homes, right, triple masked, right, went out and did that. There's no way you can tell me that they, they were terrified. And you can still see them with their masks on in their car alone outside. You know, are you kidding me? I always, thought, I always laughed at that. Seeing people in, in, in cars with a mask on alone, it's like, you know, outside to me too. it was like wearing a condom to masturbate. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And not outdoors and in, in, in people swimming. But, but I remember kayaking out in, on the Charles River here and seeing these people tw yeah, 20... 20 yards away, and a guy yells, where's your mask? I side over there. You got a mask? Huh? What are you saying to me? I go, we're we almost going to have a Viking battle right there in Charles. You know, <laughs> Shut the bleep up. Mind you. And the guy was all timid. And I said, yeah. And then I started falling. What's the matter, tough guy? It's just, so either way, it's just, they're mentally ill. More, uh, I'm mentally ill. I recognize that I'm trying to get better, but they are too. So yeah. it's, 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 I don't know. I'm babbling right now, dude, but um, I want to come back. Um, first of all, when they take this down, we'll have to re-record. Uh, second <laughs> of all, um, they are not coming to your home to take your guns. Listen to me. Yeah, I'm not. worried about it's that. It's not going to happen. What you should worry about is seeds and food. Okay, what are you going to do with food, water? If they if they pull the plug in the grid, you got candles, you got solar. You got to think of living off the grid if something happens drastically. Sure. Um, but they're going to loot the stores. They're doing it right now. You've seen people looting stores, right? You've yeah, seen the videos. Every time there's a chance to, it happens. So it's going to happen. It's going to break the supply chain. And it'll break it. It'll be irreparable. And you're on your own. There won't be stores. It's it's coming. And there's if you no, don't first see... First of all, we, all these stores, the, 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 our stores are being, uh, you know, they're gone anyway because everything's done online now. So there's no place for you to... To go you know, shopping for regular clothes and shit like that anymore. That's all disappearing slowly or quickly, depending on how you look at it. So, how long is it going to be before there's now you can't even go to the grocery store and buy groceries? Um, the sure. farms are gone, they're disappearing. You know, there's no private yep. farms yep. anymore. It's, it's, no, no fertilizer, Ukraine, which was the number one uh, producer of fertilizer, one, potash. Yeah. It's all the take, you know, the linchpin of the food chain is Brazil, and that's why they put in that fruitcake and kicked out Bolsonaro, Paraguay also. It, it, it's going to get, they've taken, you've seen all these food processing plants catch on fire. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's all deliberate and not one witness, dude. Not Crazy, one man. witness. 
Okay. And it all started. I'm going to get the Georgia Guidestones. Once they blew up the Guidestones, to me, that was a, the unraveling, right? That the, when they did that, do you remember that in July? Mm -hmm. They blew them up. Okay. And that to me, that was their own, you know, and that was their own 10 commandments. You know, their, their holy sacrament is abortion. And, um, and now it's, it's, we're all going to suffer. And like I said, America on demand, get used to it. It's going to be like Kazakhstan bare shelves and you better be able to provide for yourself. And then, the brick and mortar stores are going away, but then come the porch pirates, right? And then come the gangs into your neighborhood, right? And unless you defend yourself, okay, they're going to come at you. If you turn and talk, oh, I don't, I don't want to be called a racist or whatever, pull on them, pull on them. You know, it just, this video is definitely getting taken down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you might want to cut this. I mean, this, I don't even think you should put this up, but, um, you know, it's too late. Uh, it's live. Yeah. Oh, whatever. <laughs> But it's just, and I'll tell you what, there's 70 million people out there, male and female, true males, true females, that back me with what I just said. Um, I'm at, at an age now, dude, I've lived a good life. God, I love God, and hopefully God loves me. But um, what they've done to this country in just a short time is is, is abominable. It's, it's, it's just not the same place that I, I grew up in, uh, you know, and I know it's definitely not the same place like my mom grew up in, I've been, you know, in the 50s and 60s. I'm an 80s kid. So um, I think that that was probably uh, the last time that there was still a decent amount of innocence left. Um, yeah. I just think that after the 80s, it just really started to kind of tumble downhill very quickly. Oh, yeah. And it's all computerized, but it's also morals dropped. But um, they're talking about this Operation Blue Beam, about a fake alien invasion. And I know we don't have time to go to, but the, with the, the Chinese spy balloons, maybe another time I can tell you my take on that. But um, it's it's all I can tell you, anybody seen here, do not trust a word they say. Whatever you hear, anything they say. contradict them. Okay. Because yeah. I believe in everything, and yet I believe in nothing. Agreed. <laughs> you Agreed. know, so. All right, man. Well, listen. Hey, can you hang out just for just for five minutes, and then so oh, yeah. I'm talking, I'll set up a date to have you back on because I really want to get you back Absol on again. Very absolutely, soon. man. All right, all right, for sure. Um, but guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, this has been awesome. Uh, we'll get you back on uh, soon. We'll figure that out when we get off here. Um, Saturday night, I'll be back. Uh, same time, same place, seven p.m. Eastern time. Um, our good friend Dark Woods will be on to talk about some of the crazy shit that's going on on his property um apparently this is like i don't know it's, it's like monster central over there or some shit i don't know but he's going to come on and talk about that and um that should be an interesting show uh please tune in there i'll also see you guys tomorrow morning on my walk with uh, good old maverick that's right also somebody said in the chat if they come to my house to take my guns they got to deal with maverick maverick's my dog uh he's 20 pounds and i promise you right now he is a hurricane this yeah he's a hurricane this dog <laughs> is a menace so if you got if you want some problems bring it and i'll just yep. let him loose on you <laughs> yep 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 there you go man well peace right. everybody it was great meeting all your fans and yeah. if i offend if i offended you in something that i said too bad <laughs> There you have it, guys. Uh, so, yeah, thanks, guys, for being here. I'll see you all tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful night. Uh, until next time, I love you all. See ya.